Ilicic for Duka. It's another one for Celtic. Mark for Duka. He scored a double here on his league debut last season. Gets two again. And it's becoming embarrassingly easy. Yeah, it's a great knockdown from Vida Reset into Mark Viduka's path. And he wasn't going to miss from that range. Vikos with the back post cross. That's a delightful cushioned layoff there from Vida Reset. And Marco Viduka in exactly the right place again, attacking the front post. Berkovic through to Viduka, who turns and it's a penalty to Celtic now. He's brought down by Russell Anderson. And Celtic have a spot kick. Yeah, not too many protests either from Russell Anderson here. It's great link-up play by the front uh, Celtic players again. Lovely little turn there from Viduka, and I think he's undoubtedly clipped there by Derek, by Russell Anderson. Yeah, his left foot is definitely taken there. It could be about to get better for Celtic. Viduka, who was brought down, has already got two goals here. Henrik Larsson has the chance to get to himself. It's Larson! A perfect penalty from a perfect player. And it's a barnstorming start to the Barnes and Dalby Gira at Celtic. Yeah, he doesn't miss too many. And he varies them as well. This wrong foots, David Priest there. And he's left flat footed. A Moraptic here. It's three against two. Larson to Virtual. Mark Birchall! Celtic hit the high fives! And they are sending out a message here across the whole of Scotland and especially across Glasgow. Well, once again, Marav Chick and Larson are involved. A delightful first time layoff here from Larson. Birchall takes it onto his left side. It appeared to go under David Priest there. I thought he might have taken this with his right. Checks onto his left side and it slips under David Priest. But it was the movement and the first time passing there of Celtic that opened Aberdeen up, not for the first time tonight. And Mark Virchow gets his first of the season. Coming up to corner kick, a chance from the Albi. Johan Albi for Celtic with six minutes gone. See Johnston kept out the first effort, but there was no stopping the Albi. Corner wickedly curled into the box. Reset, knocked down the header, and onto the loose ball very quickly indeed was Yalbi. Alamein came and then stopped, got his hands to the header from Reset, bundled into the net by Yalbi. That's 1 0. Seeing Berkovic in some room, movement from Viduka and Larson. Saved by Main, but Viduka will score. That's number two. He was always alive to what was happening in the six yard box. And when Alan Main fumbled, Mark Viduka was going to make him pay. See Johnston defence again being sorely tested. Alan Main got into it, couldn't hold on to it. And there was Viduka for his third goal of the season, three in two games. And look at the movement ahead of Berkovic when he was in possession. The ball in from Larson was deflected, that deceived Main. His handling wasn't 100%. And look at the reactions here of Viduka as the ball went loose. The back heel into the back of the net, and it's 2-0 Celtic. Disputed free kick taken by Moravchik and Morton Vikos it is who scores number three. Superb delivery from Moravchik. Right foot, left foot. Doesn't seem to matter too much. Picked out head of Vikos. So many aerial targets for Celtic at set pieces. That time it was Vikos. And that makes it three. Jutting ball across. In comes Mahe. Still there, Mahe with a chance. And he scores. Mahe. Great goal. The Frenchman just 
simply kept going. They couldn't stop him when he puts it away, and Celtic are one up. After 23 minutes of the second half, the sheer tenacity of the Frenchman going in here and then keeping his cool to drive it away from Robert Douglas. And at long last, all Celtic superiority in midfield. And with so many balls played into the principal strikers coming to nothing, it's a defender who shows them the right route to go. We're into the last minute. Larson, where's he's done it? Larson with a snapshot has won it for Celtic. He makes amends for that previous miss. And a Celtic support frustrated by that Dundee equaliser. Getting, I think, a just reward out of a player who kept his eye right on the ball there, as you can see. Perfect balance, exact angle. And I think that is now put it beyond Dundee. A very slack header there. And that's a touch of class. Jackson, the ball played behind them, though. There's a lovely ball, that's it! For Duca. Brilliantly set up by Larson. Just as well the net was there, and that would have ended up in the crowd. Tremendous part of the header. And Larson in a one-to-one -one is always likely to skin somebody. He certainly did it to Naismith, laying it right on the head of the big Australian. And bang, into the net it goes. Watch the pace on the drive of that. Oh, the final pass again, letting Hearts down, and no wonder Dennett Jackson's annoyed with Presley. The pass had to be better than that. There's Larson, he must put it away again, and he does. Simple, clinical. Two touches from midfield. Wonderful vision by Beduka to allow his colleague to run onto that. And just at a time when Hearts looked as if they might break forward, Look at this superb play by Baruka. He looks up outside of the foot, and it can be made look so easy. But it never is, of course. Miobi is there. Beautifully brought down. Crowd rising to Moravchik. He wants skill in Scottish football. Perhaps you have to go to a broad to get the legs of this. Look at the pace of Berkovic. There's Mahe. It is swept in by Berkovic. He's delighted with that one. And credit to Mahe. I think uh, if he had gone down, he would have got a penalty, but he decided to sweep it over. And Berkovic coming in from the back. This is the important bit here. Another player might have gone for the penalty, but he decided that Berkovic in that good position would finish it off. And he certainly did. 25 minutes of the second half gone, and that puts it beyond any doubt whatsoever. Watch a little touchback. Getting to the outside. And in for Berkovic. And then the classic example of a man who can come in at the right time, even though a penalty area is crowded, and put the finishing touches. Look how delicate the little touches were inside the box. That was certainly put back conveniently by the touch of the goalkeeper, but he was there to take advantage. How 4 0. Slipping it through here for Virgil, who latches onto it and who puts Celtic in front. A breakthrough for the boys. Mark Virgil, the scorer. Well, at last he gets the kind of ball that he lives off. It's a very little in front of him all evening. He 
gets it here. And what a good finish from a tight angle. Delightful ball by Craig Burley. The timing of the run was perfect from Butchill. And you can't blame Colin Meldrum in that situation. Just gets in in front of Martin Baker here. One touch, bang, it's away. And all of Kilmarnock's good defensive work comes undone in a moment. And principally down to the quality of the ball. At last, Celtic get to Mark Butchill. Now Moravchik looking for Larson. Is he on the end of this? Strike to open the scoring after 24 minutes. It's Henrik Larsson's seventh goal of the season. It was a fine pass forward from Lubomir Moravchik. Larsson kept his eye on this ball as it dropped. The keeper advanced and the perfect lob put Celtic one up. It's Larsson's third goal in Europe this season. And it could be an important one that boosts the confidence of the Parkhead club and upsets the confidence of Hapuel. What will he do this time? Sets it up nicely for Mahik, goes inside the area, that's a penalty! Shimon Gershon, a judge to pull down Stefan Mahik, protests all round, but he did catch the Frenchman there with his studs. And the referee from Belgium, right on the spot. You could say it was a soft one. That's what Gershon certainly thinks. Nevertheless, it's a penalty to Celtic. And it's Henrik Larsson, who is preparing to take it. Ellen left. Well, he's trying to psych Henrik Larsson out of this penalty. He saved two penalties in the State Cup final for Hapel last year when they beat Betar in penalties to progress the UEFA Cup and now Ellen Leff is being booked for his time-wasting antics. Larson against Ellen Leff. And Henrik Larson scores his second penalty of the season it's his second goal of the evening and well it was a fine strike from the Swedish striker right into the corner and the goalkeeper hadn't a chance so Larson won that battle of nerves Celtic now 2-0 in front Egyptly there's a free kick to defend from Lubomiravchik, got Scots and swept, and the goal is given. Celtic are ahead, and a tragic 60 seconds for Hibs. They've lost Frank Susie, and now they've lost a goal as well. Larson's header, maybe a touch off the Duca, and it was well over the line. Larson certainly got the first touch, and it took a touch off Mark the Duca as well. Doubts possibly there about who gets the credit for the goal, but no doubt Celtic are one up. The pressure continues from Celtic. It's Mark Maduka. What a chance this is! That's number two, and the points are surely heading Celtic's way. They suffered a lot in the first half. They then followed Sose sending off with the opening goal. And Larson's header deflected in off the Duca this time. Mark the Duca can certainly claim the goal. And he found a big hole in the Hibs defence. But Scalpson got a touch, but he couldn't keep the ball out. Hibs now being pulled around, pulled out of shape. And the Duca punishing them with his sixth goal of the season. Berkovic for Lambert. Mark the Duca. And a chance for Ayo Berkovic, which he duly accepts. 16 minutes gone, and after a much probing at the Aberdeen defence, comes the breakthrough. The Duca started it at the edge of the area, waited the moment, found Berkovic in room. And he showed great calmness in the penalty box. 
waited for Andy Dow to commit himself, went the other way and drove a shot where David Priest wasn't going to stop it. Through for Craig Burley. And for Henry Larson! That's a brilliant goal! And that's Henry Larson's 50th league goal for Celtic. It's number 10 for the season, and number 2 for Celtic on the afternoon. This was superb stuff. The flip from Moravchik, lovely ball in from Burley. And he wasn't taking too long to weigh this up, Larson. He just whipped it away from David Priest. And Celtic, two up, four minutes from half-time. And it's Henrik Larson! That's two in two minutes from Larson. And Celtic, 3-0 up. No respite for the Aberdeen defence. Lovely ball in this time from Moravchik. And again, the deftest of touches from Larson. It wasn't power in that, but there was direction, and Priest was beaten again. To Moravchik. And a mistake by Robbie Winters presents Mark Paducah with a Celtic score. It gets worse for Aberdeen. And it gets better for Celtic. 60 minutes gone in the second half. A soft corner conceded. And following it, a soft goal. What was Winters doing? And Mark Viduka wasn't hanging about to ask any questions about it. He just wheeled, turned the ball away from Priest. And it's 4 0. Marson, it's Viduka. Saved by Priest, but Viduka will score at the second attempt. And it's almost like a rerun of Pukotri from the opening weekend of the season. Kenny Dalgleish joins in the applause alongside Chief Executive Alan McDonald. Two for Viduka, two for Larson, five for Celtic. Big holes appearing now in the Aberdeen defence. Priest again, so unlucky in that he stopped the first attempt from Viduka. But there was little he could do when the ball fell back to the feet of the Australian striker. The Manavchik corner, and Larson has a hat-trick. Another glorious afternoon for Henrik Larson. His 12th goal of the season. And Celtic's sixth of the afternoon. Andreas Meyer did his best on the goal line, but there was no way that he could keep it out. Nobody really for Aberdeen jumping against Larson. And the header over the line. 31 minutes gone in the second half. Larson makes it six. Lambert to Blinker, still has it. Viduka, Butchel alongside, but it's Mark Viduka. And that's the magnificent seven. Three for Viduka, three for Larson. And Celtic inflict yet more punishment on Aberdeen. Scoring almost at will now, Celtic. Into the box from Blinker. Viduka turned Solberg with so much ease here. And then the only job to be done was to pick his spot away from Priest. That he did with some aplomb. 7 0 inside the last minute of the match. Dick picking up again. Here's Mahe. Right. Aiming for the shot and goal. He's done it. Right has got the equaliser. He's hardly been in the game. And look at the deaf way he takes this. Good play by Mahi. Slipped inside here and Wright decides to go for it himself. And there was a deflection. That's what caused it. And Celtic back on level terms. 
right, doing a little jink to the side, and there, a cruel deflection. Damaravchik. He might go for it himself, and he does! It's there! Wonderful goal by Maravchik! You could sense he was going for it himself. And it paid off, and no wonder they're erupting. At one stage in the game, it looked as if it was getting beyond him. And look at the way he curls it as well. It's got pace, it's got swerve, and Celtic go 2 1 up. An incredible ending to this game. Billy, good pass. Ayel Berkovic. Moravchik through for Reggie Blinker. And that's 1-1. One, one. Less than two minutes gone in the second half. Celtic back on level terms. He scored in the mauling of Aberdeen last weekend at Petondry, but this one from Blinker, much more important much more significant and immediately as the second half gets underway Celtic are back level very composed was Blinker in front of goal waited his moment Combe committed himself and then Blinker just flipped the ball with the outside of his left foot over the keeper lovely pass from Moravchik which took out Craig Easton and then Blinker applied the finishing touch for his third goal of the season Mara to Lambert. Dived in, did Preje, missed it completely. McNamara's cross. Maravchik's header! And it's Mark Maduka! And it's 2 1. Two goals in three minutes turns the game on its head. And a big mistake here by Antoine Preje, the Frenchman. Dived in. That allowed Jackie McNamara to look up, measure the cross. Moravchik was there at the back post, and Mark Viduka was there for the finish. His 18th goal of the season, and the goal that makes it 2-1. Moravchik, the set-up man, and Alan Combe had no chance, as Viduka flung himself at the opportunity from close in, and he wasn't going to miss this one. First time pass for Viduka. It's Moravchik with number three. Perfectly timed, run into the box. Wonderful finish. And now four goals in three games for the Slovakian. 3 1 Celtic, 16 minutes gone in the second half. And another move to admire. Mark Viduka. Waited for Moravchik to appear. It was right into his stride. And a clinical finish right in at the post. Alan Combe didn't have a chance of keeping this out. And Dundee United, having scored the only goal of the first half, have now conceded three in the first 16 minutes of the second half. Peter for Viduka. Berkovic through. Well-timed run by Mark Burchill. Saved by Cohn, but Rocha will score. That's 4-1. Not the regular starter, Mark Burchill, but he certainly gets his quota of goals. That's his fourth of the season, and he's started only six times. The through ball from Berkovic. Virtual thwarted at the first attempt by Cohn, but he was persistent enough to tuck away the rebound. As the ball flew up in the air, Pasquale tried to get back, but Virtual was sharp to it. Lambert's pass to Johnson. Still has it, Tommy Johnson. Good play! It's gone, and a DIY effort from Johnson, who was strong enough to hold off the challenges, find himself a glimmer of light, 
and then fire a shot beyond Jim Leighton. Tommy Johnson's ninth goal of the season, and this just his seventh starting match. And Stephen Creedy again. Marafchik this time on the right foot. It's a blunder by Jim Leighton, and it presents Luba Marafchik with Celtic's second goal. 34 minutes gone, and Jim Leighton doesn't need told that he should have been able to handle this shot. It's spun up off his chest, and agonisingly for him, it dropped inside the post. Well enough hit from Marafchik, but it shouldn't have been a problem. It bounced back off the chest of Leighton, then hit his glove, spun back over his shoulder, and Leighton was beaten. He sent good winters without too many problems. Now Marafchik. No chance for Jim Leighton this time. A big slice of good fortune about Sluba Marafchik's first goal, but no doubts about this one. Through the legs, firstly, of Solberg, and then a rasping left foot shot into the roof of the net. And Celtic 3 0 up. Celtic unstoppable in this first half and this just about sums it up Solberg beaten with so much ease and then Jim Leighton was left to admire the shots 3-0, a minute left in the first half Milkovic, Johnson's on sides away from Derek White it's number four, two for Johnson, and Celtic waste no time in the second half in stretching their leads, five and a half minutes after the restart, and Johnson does it again, cutting inside, Jim Leighton got his hands to it, but he couldn't prevent this reaching the far corner, and this could turn into a total right, 5-0, 7-0, 6-0 in the league, now 4-0. On Birchill, inside the outside, it's a good run from Birchill, and it's Johnson, that's the hat-trick. A moment of joy for Johnson, and there must be deep despair in the Aberdeen defence. There are chances to clear it. Virtual started the problems for Aberdeen when he got in behind Derek White, but there was a chance for Perry to get rid of the ball. Instead, he lofted it up for Tommy Johnson, and he accepted the opportunity with some glee. So Tommy Johnson's tally now for the season, on to 11. And Virtual, still there, oh yes! Brilliant from Virtual, 1-1. One, one. Well, Stuart McCluskey and John McQuillan falling out over who should have picked him up here as the ball's played through. Virtual, I thought, had lost his chance here, but McCluskey stands off him and Burchill didn't need any encouragement to pull the trigger second time round, thought he had lost his chance, it breaks in front of him here, and Alan Main is left helpless, a wonderful finish from Mark Burchill, and more than making amends for the chance he missed in the first half, that's exactly what Celtic needed. And it's Reset, and of course, the obby has just come on, in fact he's staying back as the corner comes in. Oh, and he's knocked down, but steps up the post, and he crossed the line, the goal's been given, and Celtic have snatched it here in injury time. Well, it's Morton Vecors who's being mobbed. A difficult one for Hugh Dallas to call. He looked immediately at his assistant on the far side. It all happened so quickly. Vecors still pills the head up down. Main gets a touch onto the post. Paul Kane on the far post, up off the underside of the crossbar. I have to say I'm not convinced the whole ball is over the line. 
Good header by Vikos, main onto the post, Kane onto the crossbar. And who fancies being an assistant having to call that one? Mark Viduka claimed immediately. Abramchik's beginning to play. That must be this time, yes, Viduka. He's got the equaliser. Suddenly they found a gap in a Kalmarik defence. Right getting the initial touch. And Viduka putting it away. And you felt that goal was bound to come, given the fact that Kalmarik seemed set back on the heels not the easiest to want to take but a challenge by the defender but he remained perfectly cool one each something to this game, he'd done nothing in the first half, now look at this, beautifully curved ball and the strength and the power of Viduka, paying off there, 2-1. It's an enticing one again, Viduka, incredibly. Rising above everybody else. A brilliant hat trick by Baruka. Nobody covering him. And I think even at this stage it puts the game well beyond any doubt. And Moravchik, I think, about he sets. By Celtic knocking the ball around well. Macho picking up, I think he'll up by himself. Oh, that's a great goal! He's done it! Parkhead rejoices as Ian Wright, after so many near misses, flies up there. And no half measures with this man, he did it in spectacular fashion. All credit to the youngster inside him, who's learning his trade. And there's a master craftsman at work. 4-1 and he loves every minute of this. Look at the way he had that space, but he had to make sure of it. Absolutely delighted with it. He's right. Macho putting it back in there. Bully, can he put it away? Wonderful triangular move. Number five. And just watch how this all started from Wrights. Magnificent pass across here. Good perception by Butchell to lay it back. And there's the chest and then the foot of Burley coming in there, giving support. And there was no doubt where that was going to end up eventually. The Celtic run away with us. Pitch. Oh, no. Oh, the penalty as Viduka goes down. Now, it was a little bit theatrical. Here he's going for that. Yes, he got the ball, I think, uh, quite frankly. That was a decent tackle. Almost 18 minutes gone. Easily put in. Paduka taking it himself. Celtic a one up after a softish award. There you are, that's the way to take them. Textbook stuff. Good penetrating ball. It's confusing Hughes. Ravchik and that little turn again. skilled players in the country. 
Well, two or three times he's taken on the defenders like that, going one way and then suddenly the little pirouette, almost balletic. And icily cool the way he eventually disposed of it. Glorious goal after 29 minutes. Well, we're seeing again. Three players left turning, not knowing what was happening until the ball landed in the net. Alberkovic, the old B, good play, Paduka coming in and goal! Can he chip it over? Yes! Karabci putting it in eventually. Great play and the real powerful surge there by Viduka paid off. But notice he kept control well and he stoops the conquer. Around six seconds and we've gone 14 minutes into the second half. There we are again. was screaming for it and that's picked up because tries to chip the goalkeeper in hands beautifully scored by Vikos but given away by Hibbs again out of defence slag slag play the ball thrown out there now just watch this kind of blunder Tyus Jack just flips it in to empty space there. Alertness there by the Danish player, and that is a delightful chip that Lubo Moravcic himself might admire. 4 0. Corner kick taken from Moravcic to Mahe and gets it back. Mahe's quick! And there's the opening goal. Celtic up in the score. Johan Mjalby 21 minutes gone in the second half the celebrations led by the caretaker manager Mahe's flick worked well for Mjalby he anticipated what was coming and he caught there before Robert Douglas and the crashing header gives Celtic the lead it's Mialvi's fourth goal of the season, and it makes Celtic feel a whole lot happier. Moravcic to Viduka. Mark Viduka. Good effort, and a good goal. That's brilliant finishing from Viduka. Two goals in three minutes. Has the Celtic supporters happy again? Mark Viduka's 22nd goal of the season. And that was superbly placed. Just where Robert Douglas couldn't get to it. And Celtic now well on their way to the three points. Butcher's way off to Viduka. And for Mark Butchel again. Out comes Robert Douglas. But the chance falls for Colin Healy. And he takes it. Great finish from Healy. And it's three for Celtic. Lovely ball from Viduka. Virtual was foiled, but Douglas was committed. That left an empty goal. And Colin Healy finished perfectly. Such a clever ball this time. Back to Vara, a good run by Celtic. Viduka just inside him. And it's going wide. Oh, it's a great goal. Moravchik. What a beautifully judged header that was. It was elaborately structured, the header. He looked at it very carefully and then almost picked his spot. Well, it's a beautiful ball to the back post by Jackie McNamara. Now, he hasn't been in the game a great deal. That header is absolutely inch perfection. He uses the speed of the ball, he just directs it. Absolutely.
absolutely perfect. Well, they did say earlier, Alan, that he had the ability to turn the game out of nothing, and he did it there. But I'll tell you something, actually, this actually comes from a free kick. You can see Kenny just about to get elated, obviously. But that came from a commando free kick from Tosh McKinley, striking the ball, trying to get it to a striker, intercepted by Alan Stubbs. Benkovic again, there's the run. He got away from his marker, but took it very well. That's a tempting ball, it must be, yes! Virgil totally uncovered at the far post. It's not that it made it any easier for him. He had thousands of eyes on him as he took this. He must have been very conscious that he had a clear-cut chance and only one opportunity to make contact and put it away. And Sandy Clark must be wondering where his defence disappeared to. Well, the... Berkovic to take it. Watch players running into the middle. There's the goalkeeper, it's in! It was so simple. The goalkeeper, I think, just a little bit late to commit himself. And this is his 26th goal for the season. A delightful ball placed to his head. And in that lack of commitment, minus St. Johnson defence, out jumped and out maneuvered. They go 2 1 down. Met there by Tommy Boyd. Oh, look at the hesitation here. Viduka will lay it off. Berkovic to Viduka. Yes! Glorious goal! And that means that Mark Viduka has now scored more goals individually than the St. Johnson side put together. Second goal there, wonderful build-up, but look at the work he put in to hold on to the ball in the first place. And then with great assuredness, putting it away. Of adding to the tally, but I think comfortable enough now, but here's Viduka. There's Bocho, he's done it! And they have added to the tally. 4-1. And that uh, St. Johnson defence penetrating now, looking so fragile. Difficult angle for Butchell. But he slots it home with great confidence. Play down, that's it! Reset, open to scoring for Celtic. Suddenly popping up in the penalty area. The defender coming in, an auxiliary attacker, and Leighton is annoyed that he was left totally exposed that ball played in there by Bicos yeah, it was a lovely goal I don't know how Reset got to there a good run forward by him a lovely ball in from Bicos incredible you think there's a good spell for Aberdeen this as well hit with a sucker punch not the greatest of contacts by Reset doesn't matter Celtic one up and the Aberdeen manager for the first time has become animated he's out again that ball had to be played outside him Viduka picks up with Tommy Johnson. Can he finish it off? He does! That should be it. One quick break by Johnson and he slides it home. And it was always going to be dangerous as soon as he lost possession when they did. And Viduka picked it up there. Well, initially you thought Viduka had lost possession. A lovely ball through. Good support by Tommy Johnson. And I said at the beginning, he probably couldn't believe he was in the final in the first place. A good, cool finish. Jim had certainly cut the near post off, but there's a big gap at the back post. Manages just to stay on side and no more, Tommy. And a very clinical finish. And that actually is down to Aberdeen giving away possession. A season of huge contrasts. And today we've seen the best and most positive as the final whistle goes. Celtic. 
having won just 10 in the last 22 finals in the League Cup. Improved that record considerably. And there's one of the man. And of course, we'll be back. And Celtic about to be presented with the League Cup. Delighted support and a very satisfied looking Toby Boyd making his way up here. Well, he can afford just that little smile there. While the team that suffered a bit of ridicule and that infamous defeat that they had, I can relax a little tonight, realizing the League Cup trophy is theirs. Well, Tommy Boyd, uh, I see him occasionally in the area that I live in, and he's a delightful personality. There's the cup. The 11th time that will head for the Celtic boardroom. Every player deserving of it. You probably heard Kenny Douglas trying to uh, single out one or two of the players. Certainly mentioned Tommy Boyd. Petrov played very well. Reset the goal scorer. Because playing his part in midfield. There's Bjolby. Paduka maybe didn't have the kind of game he's been having recently. And we have the man of the match now, Tommy Boyd. Tommy, what does it mean to Celtic captain to lift the League Cup? I must be a feeling the last time we're here. So, uh, I'm absolutely delighted, you know, for the lads, for the supporters. It's a trophy, and uh, everybody here is happy, you know, we've got forward to the rest of the season. A nervy game, but in the end, two goals settled it in your favour. Yeah, you see Aberdeen have improved. Uh, we probably didn't start off as well as what we should have, but uh, we get a victory, that's all that counts. It really was a game where you looked composed, you didn't have many problems to deal with at the back. No, but we had to do our job right, and we done it defensively, we did it. So eventually got there, so, yeah, we're delighted with it. How much of a platform do you think this can provide for Celtic in the future? Well, obviously it's a start. You know, the hopes of the Celtic supporters will go and enjoy themselves tonight, and uh, I'm sure we will. Tommy, you've got the cup. You also have Alan McAnally's vote for the CIS Man of the Match. Congratulations to you. Thank you very much, Alan. Well, very satisfied. The captain there and the, the support now luxuring in their victory. Celtic players... I think always a sense of relief about the winning a cup, especially when you've had some traumas in the season before it. And now they can relax. Celtic supporters of all ages, all generations, packed into Hampden Park, enjoying these moments. There's nothing like savouring a cup final victory. You better believe it. I think they deserve it, though. I'm just watching down in front of me, Archie, and Aberdeen going in, obviously, a little unhappy, but I don't think they can be too unhappy with the way they played. Certainly on the day, they were outclassed, but they've come a long way even to get to this cup final, but they had a chance coming here, but Celtic put them in their place, and I think they simply quite outclassed them. And now we have uh, the man who scored a very vital goal in the game, Tommy Johnston. Tommy, we won't keep you away from the celebrations too long. It's been a fantastic six months for you, culminating in a goal. Yeah, tremendous, yeah. Uh, what a good month, you know. Uh, go back on the side and to be playing today, you know, is an added bonus. of the coaching goal where I'll be playing, but uh, it's fantastic. Yeah, I've waited a long time. It's been three years since I've been up here, you know. And, uh, as you can see, it's fantastic. Love it. It's been an unbelievable set of events for yourself. Some twists and turns along the way. Could you ever have envisaged this finish? No, not to be honest, no. Everybody knows about the previous regime and all that. Uh, it's great when Tommy Burns come back. Uh, and I've got my chance now, so I'm going to enjoy it. Some people have suggested, obviously, you're in the shop window. Would you like to stay a longer time here at Celtic now? Yeah, I've still got another 18 months of my contract. Why not when it deals like this? Enjoy it, Tommy. Play more. And back go the Celtic team away down towards the traditional Celtic end at Hampden Park, where there has been much jubilation through the years Celtic at one stage especially under the Steen era almost made uh, Hampden Park the second home 
There's Kenny the Gleesh. The first time I, I clapped eyes on Kenny was in Malpensa Airport back on that uh, rather sad night when Celtic had uh, lost the European Cup. And he was a young player carrying luggage at the time, Alan, and somebody said, he's going to be some player. And I said, who? Well, <laughs> the rest is history. Some player is the biggest understatement, I think, of all time. But, I mean, you can even see him in the interview. I mean, he doesn't give a great deal away, Kenny, at the best of times, but... I know for sure, inwardly, he will be absolutely delighted with that. I mean, there's a massive gap in the league. As far as I'm concerned, I think the lead, uh, the league will go to Rangers, but he'll be happy with this, all right. Don't worry about that. And now we can speak to Vidal Reset. Vidal, I'm not too sure about your hairstyle, but you've enjoyed the moment getting a goal in a League Cup final. Oh, yeah, it was uh, so nice today. You know, we, uh, we look forward to uh, win this final, and uh, all the boys uh, give 100%, and uh, I... I'm, uh, yeah, what can I say, we deserve to win today. You don't score too many goals, you must have been delighted to get on the end of the cross. Oh yeah, today I uh, played a little bit different today, I come more up front on the pitch and uh, I, I'm not so much in front of the goal, so it was nice to come front of the goal today and uh, score a goal. How difficult was it for the Celtic players to lift themselves when everybody expected you to beat Aberdeen before a ball was kicked? Yeah, but you know, uh, when, when it's a, a final, it's a final, and uh, it's all, always um, very difficult these matches, and uh, Aberdeen, they want to win as well, and uh, they played well, but uh, today we was a little bit better, I think. Well done, Vidar, enjoy the day. Thank you very much. Well, he's certainly not been influenced by David Beckham, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, enjoy... Enjoy, enjoy. These are the three words for Celtic now. Well, Kenny can sometimes be a little bit taciturn and how, but uh, I think he'll be in the throes of inward joy anyway. So there is the cup. And there'll be a lot of uh, sipping out of this tonight, that's for sure. The final squad, of course, with Celtic now, the League Cup holders, and I can hand you back now to Jim. from Berkovic to Mialbi, laid back for Lynch. His first Celtic start and his first Celtic goal. He's been impressive right from the start, possibly the pick of the youngsters. And there's something quite appropriate, and it's Simon Lynch who grabs the glory with the opening goal. Laid back by Mialdi, this was clever play. One touch to get the ball under control for Lynch. The big cheer going around the ground is because Henrik Larsson may well be about to enter the fray. And Ryan McCann. Mark Burchill got the final touch, as most inside Celtic Park had their eyes on Henrik Larsson who looks set to be introduced to the action. But while all that was going on, Ryan McCann was foiled in his attempts at scoring his first Celtic goal. It took a touch off the hand of Alan Combe, and it wasn't going in, and it needed the final touch from Mark Burchill, his 12th goal of the season. Now, here is the sight Celtic supporters have been waiting for for some considerable time. Ayo Berkovic makes way, and it's the return, an emotional return, surely, for Henrik Larsson. Seven months ago to the day he broke his leg in Lyon. He's missed 32 matches having scored 12 goals in 12 games right at the start of the season. Now he's back, 
And will he be ready for Euro 2000? A new era dawns for Celtic Football Club. You forgive this lot for being sceptical. They've heard that line four seasons running, after all, but the evidence would suggest that this time their club has got it right. Martin O'Neill has earned the right to this job. He has the experience, he has the hunger, the desire, the passion and the commitment. Total commitment. Celtic have been close to his heart all of his life. They are sporting their new away kit today. Incidentally, Dundee United will be playing in green. That's their away kit. And it's to mark their 90th anniversary when they were formed as Dundee Hibernian. Celtic waiting for Dundee United, who will be led out by Jason DeVos. The season starts here for these two teams. Ten months of toil lie ahead. Nobody quite knows what those months will hold, but we are about to get the first clues. Anniversary. In the early days, they were known as Dundee Hibernian. Well, the referees played a good advantage. And Chris Sutton is there. So is Larson. That'll do for starters for Martin O'Neill, Celtic, and the rest of the Scottish Premier League. Beware, Henrik Larson is back. Yeah, I think it's fitting it was Larson as well, Ian. He's had a marvellous match so far. But this is a terrific advantage from Hugh Dallas. A great tackle by DeVos here on Sutton. And Larson only needs one touch. He knows exactly where Combe is. He knows where the far post is. And it's a terrific piece of technique. DeVos thinks he's done his job here. He's made a marvellous challenge. That is top-class finishing from a top-class player. Uh, what a relief for Martin O'Neill, I'm sure, to see this man back to his best. It's high jump time for Martin O'Neill. The first goal of his Celtic managerial career. But here is Jackie McNamara. Larson let it go, Sutton's little touch. He can't dig it out. Stubbs, Sutton is in there. McNamara, what a save! And it's come to Bahi! but you have to feel for Alan Combe here who makes a magnificent save from Jackie McNamara United caught defending right on top of Alan Combe under real pressure that's a magnificent save from Alan Combe Mahi does better this time because he pulls it back across the face of the goal but there's always liable to be a taker and Chris Sutton gets his first sniff tonight and that's all he needs <laughs> I think Mahi's pretty happy about it anyway a cushioned return from Larson in from McNamara. And back in from Lambert to Petrov. It's a wonderful strike by Stylian Petrov. Celtic strike first, 11 minutes gone. And that had Martin O'Neill on his feet. He was bouncing up and down at Tannadice last Sunday. And Celtic have taken just 11 minutes to open the scoring. Lovely touch on his chest to control the ball. And the hook shot was well away from Andy Gorham. Petrov struck just once last season and already He's equaled the total. But his space for Petrov, Bobby Johnson, looking for a little bit of support, gets it, not surprisingly, from Lambert. And here's Larson, yes! Larson, who's been able to elude the defenders with the greatest of ease, left with nobody covering him there. 
intercepted it as a gift. Look at this. All in his own ear. And he kept remarkably composed. And no wonder the Commander defense ought to hang their heads about that. Confirmation there by the PA announcer, as if there was any doubt about it. Well, seemed good at the time, but it was played across to him. Arson, no offside, Johnson, can he put it away? He can, yes! No cover for Johnson. He picked it up. And drilled it away, Celtic in the lead. With about uh, 18 minutes of the game remaining. Getting away from his pocket, and that wasn't the easiest of finishes, given the angle, the pressure on him, the goalkeeper coming out. But he made exactly sure. Bauer and strong in the tackle. Colin Cameron got away from that one. Just too much on it from Larson. Celtic winning the balls though in midfield. Petrov tried a little one, two, and there it's taken away from his own goalkeeper. Celtic menacing again. There's Sutton, he's done it. Chris Sutton scores his second goal for the club in the right position at the right time and answering his critics in the south in the most positive manner. Picked up well by Pedro. Look at the curl in the ball, but the big fella had to be in the right place at the right time. And look at the way he controlled it with that downward yeah! angled header. Celtic at this uh, stage deservedly up through the very expensive signing beginning payback time for this man. Oh, there he is again! Sutton with a head. And it may well be the beginning of a very prolific season for this man, especially if he gets as much accommodation in the air as his heart's defence has given him. Who was supposed to be marking? Celtic two up. And you can see the way he creeps into that space. And again, deftly dealt with. Still had to guide the ball in there. Archie. There he is again, almost in. Lambert just passed in. There was a deflection, I think Larson might have got a touch. Lambert took it beautifully, drilling it in. And I suspect there was a touch by Henrik Larson. Well, they can argue about that one in the dressing room between the pair of them. Let's see how we can adjudicate this. Back out to Lambert it goes. And blasted in. And there might have been the slightest touch there by this man. Will he claim it? Floated in there. Back out it comes. Watch the drive in. Keep your eye on the ball. Yes, it was Larson. And like all strikers, Jealously guarding the record, he'll claim it. That's a better ball, and Hearts have pushed forward. Left gaps again. Sutton, here's Moravce, can run the outside. Yeah, it is, that does it. He took that so well, just when Hearts were getting back into the game. The counter-attack, gaps in a Hearts defence. They had a lot of work to do, even though they had possession. They kept it well, good uh, combination here between the pair of them. But look what he had to do yet. Remarkable how composed he kept himself because that was a really superbly taken goal. 4-1. 17 minutes into this half. And Celtic may have dispelled what may have been any suggestion of a Hearts comeback. The 
subject of the player count of the first 15 minutes is Chris Sutton on Sky Digital Channel 404. It's often been debated down the years as to which was the best Old Firm game, but it's quite simple, really. The best Old Firm game is the next one. It gets to you like that, and the next one is here. Yeah, both managers have been trying to play it down in, but uh, this is a biggie. Psychologically, this is a biggie. A Celtic win today would signal a rebirth under Martin O'Neill. A Rangers victory, well, it would let them play in the high psychological ground, and they've really had Celtic in a psychological arm lock over the last decade. Bobby Petter with an early surge on his old firm debut. And he'll get a free kick. Well, that's what Martin and he will be looking for plenty of this afternoon. Bobby Petter, full tilt here down the left-hand side, clearly tripped there. And he gives Celtic a free kick. Well, in fact, Stuart Dougal's given the corner. Maracic sends it in, and Stubbs and Larson are there, and it's turned in by Chris Sutton! Unbelievable! Chris Sutton makes an immediate impact on his old third debut, and Celtic are in front! Well, I bet he can hardly believe his luck in. A gift from God for Chris Sutton. Lorenzo Amoruso screaming at the, at the stand side linesman for offside here. It sets up nicely for Sutton at the back post. I think he's on. Two Rangers players on the goal line. It breaks perfectly for him. Stefan Kloss with no chance whatsoever. And as you see there, he's well on side. And Celtic, Chris Sutton and Martin O'Neill have the start of their dreams. 51 seconds is how long it took Chris Sutton to score for Martin O'Neill's Celtic. And white players need that. And this lad looks right in the mood this afternoon. Celtic seeking a second. Maracic sends it in! Chris Sutton does much 
magnificently well in the first place to win it over Amoruso. Lassen on his way, look at that skill. And he has the confidence, the composure and the technique to chip it over Stefan Kloss. Look at the arrogance in that finish. That, as you say, is the mark of a world-class player. Absolutely magnificent. Celtic 4, Rangers 1, and that's what Celtic were missing last season. The tremendous talents of Henrik Larsson. King Henrik of this part of Glasgow, that's for sure. So Rangers, three behind again, but here's Barry Ferguson. Free kick that will be taken by Bobby Petter. Petter delivers, Larsson's header! He's done it again! It's a double for Henrik Larsson! It's number five for Celtic! Well, once again, it's a wonderful goal, Ian, but once again, you have to question the marking in the back for Rangers. Good delivery, whipped in by Petter, but look at the room that Henrik Larsson has. Barry Ferguson, the nearest to him, and he's three yards off him. And it doesn't get any easier for strikers than this. But of what's still to be done, though, and Larsson applies the death of headers to find the corner but he should have been marked tighter than that Henrik Larsson scores his 57th league goal in 84 matches for Celtic helped on by Dodds but Celtic are everywhere and Johan Mialbi has put in a good shift as well having had to come on come into this cauldron in the first half of the injured Lambert Petter now has released Stefan Mahi. Have Celtic got another one left in them? Sutton is there! Yes, they have! Sutton scores! It's six of the best for the very best today! Celtic! It's a great strike of goal, Ian, because he can't have much left gas in his tank, but he still makes sure he's at the back post when the ball comes in here. And he has to make up a lot of ground. You see him on the far side there. Times are run to perfection, drifts off Amoruso, one touch is enough, and what an old firm debut for Chris Sutton. Martin O'Neill said all he lacked is confidence, well he certainly won't lack it now. He's a hero in the stand of Glasgow today. The Rangers fans are on their way, and no wonder, their team has been second best today. It doesn't happen very often, but it's happened today. They're being waved goodbye. For the first time in 62 years, an old firm team has scored six in an old firm league game. Celtic did it in 1938, and they've done it too in the year 2000. But hang on, they might be after number seven. Although there are only seconds remaining. Well, I suppose they'll settle for six. Eh? It was awesome. It finishes. Celtic 6, Rangers 2. Aimed at Sutton, good control. The back heel from Alan Thompson. And penalty kick is given. Nick Colgan looks aghast as Alan Thompson surged into the penalty box. Colgan undoubtedly was going for the ball, but caught the Celtic wing-back. The penalty is given. Colgan still unhappy about this ruling. This was the challenge for the ball. Well, he looked to get contact with the ball, did Colgan. Down went Thompson. Colgan might be about to lose what would just be his second SPL goal of the season. It's Henrik Larsson. 
Larson strikes. 1 0. 18 minutes gone. There'll be some debate about the award of the kick. But there's ever no great questions about Henrik Larson's finishing. Colgan went one way and the ball went the other. Celtic have the lead. And surprise, surprise, Henrik Larson. Henrik to Suzy. In for Moravchik, away by Suzy. Hips push out. Thompson back in. Tremendous vision from Paul Lambert. Back with Moravchik. In for Henrik. Action of the first half and Celtic make it two. Larson not picked up by Hibbs. And when it was lofted in by Luba Moravchik, Henrik Larson was waiting to pounce, as were Valharan and Sutton in behind him. But Henrik Larson had already decided it was his. Two for him, two for Celtic. Played almost exactly 90 now. And McLarson can still be a threat from midfield, as Hibbs are about to find out from Lambert and Virchel. And 3-0. He's done so much damage up front as Henrik Larson to Hibbs this afternoon. Now he does it from the midfield. Perfectly timed the through pass. Hibbs were trying to play offside. It didn't come off. Not too much has come off for them this afternoon. And Paul Lambert unselfishly set it up for Mark Burchill and his fourth goal of the season. He wants away because he can't get a regular first-team place. All he can do is continue to stick the ball in the back of the net. Here's Paul Lambert. Lovely one-two. Lambert goes down. And a penalty to Celtic, would you believe? Incredible. Two quick penalties in this contest. I don't think he's got any reason to go down if he wasn't tripped here. I'm not convinced it was deliberate here from Ian Ferguson, but he certainly catches Paul Lambert. Lambert driving across the front of him. Well, trying to play the one-two. Paul Lambert on his way. Well, there doesn't seem to be an awful lot of contact there. Well, Willie Young pointed to the spot a little bit quicker this time than he did the last time. And Celtic have an immediate chance to hit back. It's Henrik Larsson. And it's 1 1. And once again, a perfect penalty from a perfect player. Well, Martin O'Neill couldn't have asked for a better response in. And once again, it's a fine penalty under pressure. Has been known to go for power, Henrik Larsson. And just strokes it away. Right and back going the wrong way. Oh, lovely little touch from Larson and Thompson back to Henrik Larson, who's onside. And Henrik Larson scores. And Celtic may just make it 11 wins on the spin after all. But my word, they've had to work mighty hard for it. Well, Deferman claiming for offside. Henrik Larson wasn't asking any questions. He was quite happy to play on. And it'll be interesting to see this again. Larson involved in the beginning of the move with the black heel continues his run and as he's played in he's onside there I think and he has the composure and the class to tuck it away created and finished by Henrik Larson and he wasn't asking any questions he got on with the job there Alan Thompson who played him in wrong foots the keeper and he wasn't going to miss from there on in and has his 12th goal of the season already.
Thompson hovering on the edge of the ball. Selection! Sutton gets his head to it. Well, that was coming. The pressure mounting. And floating the ball high into the penalty has been causing this defence no end of trouble. And with the best uh, of efforts of Turner, it couldn't be kept out. Sutton rising up there brilliantly there. All it required was a touch. With serious intent. Ryan puts it in, it's there! Well, I said they had to relieve the tension, and they've done it brilliantly. Well, a whole cluster of players in front of him. You could tell by the mood as he shaped up to this that he wanted this himself. And look at the way he rifles it through. And it goes, and that's it! Awesome again! Henry Carson has this ability to pick his side up as he did in Aberdeen, almost exact replica of the way he put it in the net at Petodre. As I was saying, they had this uh, defence covered so very well. And at a vital time, 11 minutes before halftime, up he pops again and a cluster of players and made it look ridiculously simple after all the hopping and puffing in front of goal that preceded it. Uh, Thompson. Beautifully inside, that's a great goal. Picked up beautifully by Thompson, reading from that deep position. Well, he took it uh, superbly well. The second goal for the club, rifling it in. I think he would have preferred the left foot, but it doesn't matter. He hit that with a great deal of certainty. Beautifully touched out to him. Just a lucky little break. That wasn't a bad ball at all. Now coming in there with the left foot. Oh, it's a great goal. Trenny. A superb strike by the youngster. It wasn't the easiest of balls to take, but I did talk about that great left foot of his earlier in the day, and here is ample proof of it coming up now. It really was a great strike. But look at the step over to the Hearts defence was surprised, but even then he still had to hit a good shot, and it was a really good strike. He kept his head. Knew what he was doing, kept his eye on the ball, controlled the shot. Superb strike, good ball from, good work from Tommy Johnson initially. There's a step over it through the, the Hearts defence and lovely striking, lovely hit into the net. That's a nice little ball through, that's a great goal! Tremendous finish by Smith. And the youngster, who was foiled earlier on, took that with remarkable maturity. It was a lovely pass from Mike Namara, wasn't it? Uh, Jimmy Smith has got away from the two defender. Beautiful ball. One touch. Ball in front of him. Tremendous strike. Well, you know, it, it wasn't the easiest ball to take either with the two no, defenders converging right. on him. He gave himself that little bit of room, still away from the two defenders. Super strike from that distance across the field decided on the shorter one but Thompson makes it for him Alpeda Johnson uh, with the header this could be it it is Healy puts it away well I think we were justified in praising the goalkeepers right up until that moment and that was a fatal error well, it was a lovely move from Celtic, wasn't it? Because it was a great ball in from the left-hand side, good header. Didn't uh, Niami didn't get get the ball comfortably there? Well, he's got to make sure that doesn't break out. But all credit to young Colin Healy, another youngster for Celtic, in there, and you just see the ball breaking away from his leg. Really, he either 
I would think the goalkeeper's really got to hold on to that or get it round the post out of the way. But all credit to, to young Healy, he was on the spot. Thompson comes across. That's exactly what Sertinger tried to do. Johnson tries to put it in right, but it's there. Moravchik. Well, well, well. Suddenly, the youngsters snapped. Again, we had praised them so much. He let Moravchik get away, and that finishes it. Credit to Lubo Moravchik for creeping in at the back. And a touch of rawness there from the youngster. Ball watching, and they suffered. That's right, but that's always a good delivery between the goalkeeper and the last defender. And he hesitates, doesn't he? And in goes Moravchik and says, thank you very much. And the time is well and truly over, and he knows it. Although his expression is, is hardly um, speaking volumes. No, he'll be relieved that uh, he's got through the tie. No, he, he changed his team quite a bit about it. No one let him down, but, uh, you know, it, it was the fact that he had experienced substitutes on the bench in that last period that he was able to bring on. It's McNamara, he's gone to left line, he does it again, that's a glorious goal. They are rubbing it in now. Well, he scored it for Park, and that was much more spectacular and there may have been a deflection. Yeah, there was a deflection, wasn't it? Just lifted it away from the goalkeeper, but uh, good strike from Jackie McNamara, and it's a shame that it had to finish this way from Hart's point of view, but, you know, Celtic really have had some tremendous amount of shots. Yeah, I, I think... Uh, the, in the... Can I go hemmed in? Well, Hannon, to the gaps. Inside and outside, away from Mitchell. Deflected off, Ali Mitchell, and here's a chance. And Alan Thompson gives Celtic the lead. Not picked up as he came in at the far post. There's a deflection on the way as the ball came in. And Alan Thompson opens the scoring. Well, it came at the end of the best spell of football in the game. Rob, both ends come on at very good attacks. Got an unpossible deflection across the Kelly defence, but it was three Celtic players all going for it. Kamara was standing still at the same time. Look at this, there's deflected. Lasson's missed it there. Thompson has done very well to sneak in at the back post and put that away. But what a, a, a good bit of football it was, I say. Both ends started with Kamara with a fine attack, didn't quite create anything, and then Celtic getting forward at the other end. And the early cross caused Kamara the problem, and uh, Thompson put it away. Thompson's got a good left foot, of course. Might get it in yet. Plays to the side, and that's a great goal. Suck it. Yes, he took it so well. And he simply wore down the St. Johnson defence. Good touches, good combination. And first of all, Thompson, look at the way he shrugged his way through there. And then eventually, Sutton with that positive finish. He had only one intention, and that was to drift it well away from the goalkeeper. His eighth goal of the season, and just as good as any of the others he's already scored. The tangle. With a clean break there. Well, that's him, yes. Cleanly taken. He's hardly been in the game, but then that's a mark of quality. And we've seen it in different circles this week already by men who can score goals out of virtually nothing. We saw Simone do it. We saw Laslam do it. And now that man there. Difficult angle, defender bearing down at him. Puts it away. That's all Jim. Oh, what a goal. Oh. For a moment, I thought that was going to hit the post. Or that the goalkeeper would have got to. No wonder he's delighted. In actual fact, nobody does that better than he. Well, Alan Main may be asking himself the question, ought I to have got to that? But you've got to give it to the quality of the ball played into goal. And Celtic go three up with seven minutes of this half remaining. Look at the way it fairly whistled in. I think uh, Maine 
was deceived by the way the ball just kept going. He had judged himself to be placed right in the middle of the goal. Jasovic didn't. Thompson must put it through here. Now then, Larson off to put it away. When he gets a chance like that, he makes it look ridiculously simple. Of course, it never ends. Second in the game for the man, and they will live wide open there. Look at that chip. Reminiscent of another one somewhat earlier in the season. Celtic four up. Here's the free kick. In from Tom Boyd. Petar finding a way through. Valharan! Superb from Yas Valharan. His third goal for Celtic, and that's the best of the lot. Hearts had the lead for only two minutes. Set up by the cutback from Petar. And you won't see a better precision finish than this. Curled into the top corner. Anti Demi could only look on in admiration. A brilliant goal from Valharan and Celtic immediately back on level terms. 1 1. Martin O'Neill will be absolutely delighted at that quick response. Thompson having a look at the penalty box. Sutton and Larson and Mialbi and Valhannon all waiting. Headed away by Severin. On the left foot of Marovcic! 2-1 Celtic. Ten minutes left in the first half. Again, so much to admire about the finish from Lubo Marovcic. He just sized this up and curled it in. He's played against Hearts three times this season, Moravchik, and now he's scored in each of the games. The scorer of the equaliser, Valharan. Just it down by Larson for Petrov. Agat, Henrik Larson. Mistake this time by Niemi. He was the hero for Hearts earlier on with that stunning save from Mialbi's header, but beaten by Mialbi's fellow Swede Larson here. And Anti Niemi will be kicking himself for failing to hold on to the first effort from Larson because when it rebounded back to Larson, there was only one place this was heading. Into the back of the net, Henrik Larsson's 20th goal of the season. And again from Marovcic! It's Johan Mialbi! Denied earlier by the heroics of Niemi. But he wasn't going to be denied this time. The short corner played in by Marovcic and Hart's guilty of not picking up their men. Accusing glances all round in the Hearts defence. And Niemi stayed rooted to his goal line. Fulton's lost it to McNamara. Johnson and Henrik Larsson, chance for number five. It is five. It trickled over the line, but that won't bother most people inside the stadium. And it won't bother Henrik Larsson. Now 21 goals for the season. After it was lost by Fulton in midfield. And full punishment was forthcoming for him. Anti Niemi got himself in the way of the shot. But it carried enough pace to cross the goal line. And it's now 5-1 Celtic. Nine minutes left. Pass. And Didier Agat 
turning it into an excellent one. Is it to be six? It is. Stylian Petrov. The happy half dozen for Celtic. And that's two goals inside a minute. The pass from Larson was a good one. But the run from Agat showed frightening pace. And such is the fitness of Stylian Petrov that right at the end of the match he's able to make a long run from the midfield and apply the finishing touch. Put that through, good play, Johnson. Now Petrov on the run, and just beyond, and that's it! Beautifully struck by Mirabczyk, the equaliser. Confirmland left, woefully exposed on the right-hand side. Acknowledges the adulation of the crowd there. Now, this had to be kept done. Good run by Petrov. This is an excellent ball across the face of the goal. Now, that's not the easiest of chances. I've seen a lot missed from that. But he kept it simply well, though, drilled into the corner. You'll be all the time in the world here. Terrible lapse, he scores! Dreadful mistake by Justin Skinner. But having said that, that was still a very, very tight angle. Well, I think the reputation of this man preceded him. Because Skinner seemed to be overawed by his presence. Look at this. Now, here is where he had to be deadly accurate. And cool, and that combination put Celtic 2 1 up after 20 minutes. There's a corner, and Larson almost gets it. It's a goal, though. Johnson gets it. He'll be delighted with that. Substitute today for. Chris Sutton, or coming in in place of Chris Sutton, rather, and down he went. Had to be courageous to get down to that, and as I said, there's now about uh, just under 11 minutes of the game remaining, and that should do it. Occupying the minds of the Dundee players. Celtic playing the quick, punchy passing for Abjic. Cutting it back, who's there? It's at the back of the net! Stylian Petrov! There's only just four minutes gone and Celtic have the lead. And the Bulgarian internationalist, well, he scored the only goal in the victory against Dundee at Celtic Park, and he repeats that feat at Dens Park. Lovely play by Celtic, and Rakati with no chance. Patience by Moravchik, precision by Petrov. The full 90 minutes is up, and it's a corner to Celtic, and it's a case of injury time now being played. 1-1. Petrov, the flick, the header, dropped down. It's taken only four minutes. 
for Celtic to hit the front. Aberdeen opened up with ease. Good pass from Alan Thompson. That took out McNaughton. On the overlap was Peta. And the near post run from Larson timed to perfection. He was there before Solberg. And Ryan Essen was beaten. Celtic one up. Up goes Ramon Vega. There he is! What a start! He made it clear as he wandered forward, Ramon Vega, that he wanted the ball played to him. Drifted away from his marker. And as easy as you like. He's only been a Celtic player for 18 minutes in terms of on-field action. And this is first goal for the club. It's poor defending from an Aberdeen point of view. Alan Thompson with the delivery. Good movement from Vega. He got on the wrong side of David Lilly. It's now 2-0. Trying to get there before Mialbi. Does so. Mialbi is the winner in the end. And the first team ahead for a gut. Johnson, Larson, surely this time. He had to get another one eventually, didn't he, Henrik Larson? Posing for a team photograph with a little mention on the T-shirt of Johnson as well there. And Larson makes it 25 goals for the season. His strike rate is phenomenal, although in truth he might well have been four or five by now here. But that's 3-0 and 14 minutes left. Takes off, Thompson, McNamara. Larson's layoff. Good ball in from Alan Thompson. And Henry Larson onto it. That is sensational. A hat trick for Henrik. And that was something special. It was Henrik Larson who started it off with the layoff for Thompson. Then he was off and running. He went around the Aberdeen defence. And what a blistering finish that is. With his right foot on the volley, right into the top corner. And Ryan Essen could only look on here in admiration because he'd little chance of getting close to it. It's a wonderful finish from Henrik Larson. Three for him and four for Celtic. Corner kick from Lennon. That's Vega. Ramon Vega does it again. Two goals on his debut. And now 5 0 for Celtic. I think even he is a little bit puzzled as to how that one crept in. But creep in it did. What a start for the Swiss defender. Towering header it was, but Kevin McNaughton should surely have kept this out. It's been an unhappy afternoon for the teenager, and that just compounds it for him. He headed it against the post, and it flicked back off him into the net, but it's Vega's goal. Inside the last two minutes with Jamie Smith. Six. And a second goal of the season for youngster Jamie Smith. Aberdeen in all sorts of disarray at this stage and caught out badly here. Great idea, great run from Smith. Quick thinking from Celtic. The opposite could be said of Aberdeen. Essen horribly exposed and Smith scores for Celtic 6-0 Celtic 
pick up through Didier Agat. Positive running from Agat. He may go solo. Didier Agat clean through. And Didier Agat scores for Celtic. 13 minutes gone. And Didier Agat's second goal for the Parkhead side. It was a fine burst of pace through the midfield area. The decoy run took the defenders away and Agat slotted it beyond McAlden. St Mirren nil, Celtic 1. Vega's free kick. Controlled by Sutton. Through ball, looking for Petrov. May get the chance to cut it back. He does. And Henrik Larsson knocks it into the back of the net. It's goal number 27 of the season for Henrik Larsson. It was good play from Chris Sutton to get the ball wide. And when it was cut back there by Stylian Petrov, Larsson had the easiest of chances to knock it beyond McAlden. Celtic 2 0 up. Neil Lennon's cross. And Chris Sutton scores. Nine minutes left in the first half. And a bad defensive error. Allows Celtic to take the lead. Lofted in by Neil Lennon. I think Gary Hay thought that Gordon Marshall was coming to take this. He made no attempt to get to the ball. And Chris Sutton had a clear one in. He stopped. Sutton didn't. And that's Chris Sutton's 12th goal for Celtic. It's 1 0. Flicked on by Larson for Sutton. And neat back heel. Down goes Petrov. Larson scores number two. As the debates were going on about whether that was or wasn't the penalty, Henrik Larson was untroubled as he tucked the ball away for his 29th goal of the season. Good link up here. It was Gary Holt's challenge on Cillian Petrov, but it matters nothing now. As Henrik Larsson has struck yet again. There was grappling going on in the box. That looked like a dive from Petrov to try to win a penalty against Gary Holt. But as the ball ran free, first to react was Henrik Larsson. 2 0. One ball from Mialbi. Stretching out was Larsson. And here's Chris Sutton. A chance to make a number three. Well, that's got to go down as poor defending by Kilmarnock. Chris Sutton unchallenged to score his second of the game. His 13th goal for Celtic. The long ball from Mialbi shouldn't have been a huge problem for Kilmarnock. But into a gaping hole in the defence went Chris Sutton. And round Gordon Marshall to tuck the ball away. with the outside of the right foot from Johan Mialbi. And here's Henrik Larsson to score his second goal. It's almost scoring by numbers. It's that simple for Celtic. 4-0. And still more than 20 minutes left. Quality on that pass from Mialbi down the line, which took out Gary Hay. And you don't leave Henrik Larsson unmarked and suffer upon it. And this is Henrik Larsson's 30th goal of the season. Halfway in the SPL cap. Monarch on the back foot again. Thompson. Gets it back from Larsson. And Henrik Larsson in for his hat trick. for Henrik and 5-0 for Celtic well give us a smile Martin he's got to be happy with that and the misery continues for Phil Monarch.
And it could get worse for them. They've lost five goals already. Thompson and Larson combined, and there was never much doubt as Larson went through and Gordon Marshall that he was squeezed this in. Three for Larson, two for Sutton, five for Celtic, and Kilmarnock in big bother. That was aimed at Larson. Gann was in the way. One back by Chris Sutton. Neil Lennon. Good ball from Larson to Malachik. Driven in low at the near post. Here's Henrik Larson. Could it be number four for Larson? Good. Six nil Celtic. Unstoppable. And you just knew, despite the odds being stacked against him initially, that Henrik Larson would find the way to goal. He's done it so often, that was Gary Hay who missed it at the near post. And Henrik Larsson yet again applying the finishing touch. And now for him, 32 goals this season. It's 6-0 Celtic, three minutes left. It's Lennon to whip this in, and Ramon Vegas on the end of it! Once again, it's the aerial ability of Vega here. That proves costly for Sonar. Once again, they don't have a choice here. They have to defend that deep. Great ball across the face of the goal by Vega. And Bilharan brave enough to stick his head in, where he knows it's going to get kicked here. And I think he does take a sore one. Good ball in. Vega at his very best at the back post. So Sven Ra temporarily down to 10 men, with Keith Knox getting patched up. Here's Henrik Larsson, and Chucky McNamara could be in here, and he is! McNamara clinically claims Celtic's second early in the second half. Well, it's a terrific finish from Jackie McNamara. Gets himself forward in support here, well held up there by Henrik Larsson, waiting in the supporting run, provided by Jackie McNamara. Terrific finish there from the midfield player. And again, getting back to what I said about Neil Lennon, with Neil Lennon and the team, both McNamara and Thompson know they can go forward, know they've got a bit of security behind them. And Jackie McNamara gets his reward there, and it's a long, long way back for St. Ram now. Thompson. Sutton. One of those little layoffs again for Henrik Larsson, he can't get a glimpse of goal. Bobby Petter did, though. Oh, it's an own goal from Knox! Oh, it gets even worse for him. What a shame for Keith Knox, Celtic, 3-0 up. Uh, to be fair, he's under real pressure. It's a marvellous ball in from Bobby Petter. All started by Chris Sutton. Had the body strength to win it, but that's a great ball in from Petter. And when goal defenders are running towards their own goal, that's always liable to happen. Good early ball in from Petter. Oh, Maracic could be in here. He's on his own, although Lennon is arriving. Maracic goes for goal himself. Oh, and it's squeezed past Mark Nagio and in. And Celtic have a fourth through Lubomir Maracic. Yeah, well, I mean, he can take it on either side. He's so good with either foot. Quite happy to go on to his left side here. And Mark Nagio won't be happy with that. He's had a good night, the Eastern Rock keeper. Gets something on this, gets something of his right hand onto it, but just not enough. Particularly with the, the better delivery Celtic get from set pieces these days. Well, the free kick towards Sutton, and what a start for Celtic! Just the start they wanted, and Larson has struck. That's a needless free kick to give away, but what a wonderful delivery there! Whipped in between the goalkeeper and the last defender. Larson reacts quickest. A dream start for Celtic there. It is a terrific delivery from Alan Thompson there. Gets so much action in the ball. It's coming away from the goalkeeper. And Henrik Larsson provides the perfect start for Martin O'Neill. Well 
Thompson. He skipped away from Tomashek. Thompson centre, and look who's in there! That is brilliant! And Celtic clinically claim their second goal, and it's a double for Henrik Larsson. Oh, came out of nothing, it's the same combination as well. Alan Thompson did so well. Little change of pace on the halfway line to take him clean on the left-hand side. Has a look up, and a look at Larsson coming blindside over Grant Murray here. Half a yard is all he needs, and that is a magnificent finish with the outside of his right foot. Just gets across the front of Grant Murray, timing the run to perfection once again. And Niemi left absolutely stranded. A wonderful goal. Henrik Larsson's 34th goal of the season. Thompson's flick. Larsson looking to get away. He's got Didier a gap away to his right hand side. He might well bring him into it. He does. A gap's cross. Oh, Larson oh, yeah. for Hattrick. He's done it. 3 0. A hat trick for Hendrick. Tell you what, he adjusts his position here about three times when a gap looks up. What's Larson's movement here? He goes front post first of all, checks out, then drops off. Niemi just caught on his heels there. And once again, you have to take your hat off to Henrik Larsson, who won the ball in the first place before feeding a gap wide. Who's on the end of it when the ball comes in? What a night he's had. Not for the first time in his career in Scotland. Larsson is here, Hatter, against Hearts. 35 goals. Thompson again. It's a vicious looking one off the bar, and that's it. Vega comes up there, gets his head to it. And Sutton puts the ball in the back of the net. The Celtic end erupts. Good work by Vega initially. There's the header off the bar, and Sutton, nobody covering him. Celtic a one up. It's typical Celtic this season, Archie. A real physical presence for set pieces. There's room on Vega, probably the biggest guy in the side. The shot well, gets a header off the crossbar. Floss actually got a touch to it. But that's a magnificent finish for Sutton. He's fallen backwards, and he still manages to keep the ball down and put it high into the net. The difference here was Robert Malcolm taking the ball forward into the, the Celtic territory and finding Barry Ferguson with a good pass. Well, there's, I think, the referee is saying that's the second goal. Larson follows through and gets the second goal. As the youngster, Robert Malcolm, was left stranded there on his own against the most lethal attacker in the United Kingdom. And he got in such a tangle. Perfectly correct decision by the referee. Well, he could have bust an head at the end there, but all he needed to do was pick it there and then touch it in. Rangers woefully exposed in defence. Well, we spoke about Henry Lash's work rate. I think there we talk about his determination and then his composure just to have the presence of mind to lob it over across his head. He knows he's got all the time in the world to put it into the empty nets. It's an absolutely fantastic start for Celtic. In fact, was booked. There's Wilson getting away with it. Penalty awarded. A penalty awarded for that challenge by Wilson. Then it goes there and he's leading into him. And the referee is awarded the penalty for that. Larson burrowing his way in there. Yeah. And Wilson putting the body right across him. I think it was a penalty. I think it's very reminiscent of the penalty that Henry Larson won over in Bordeaux, and it's really that anticipation and electric quickness in the penalty box just to get in front of the defender. Scott Wilson didn't see him coming. He's committed to, to go for the ball, 
and it's resulted in the penalty for Celtic. And I think he's going to book, uh, well, certainly the goalkeeper's there and getting it. Well, Stefan Klaus gets a yellow card for that. Stefan Klaus booked for that. And the ball is lying away behind the, the goal line. And almost considerately, Alberts goes after it. Puts it back into the box. Yeah. You know, I think it's one of those situations as a, as a penalty taker, you don't want to stand about waiting too long. It you know, might have been a better for one of his teammates to retrieve the ball there and give Henrik Larson time to make up his mind what he's going to do. And this could put it beyond Rangers at this stage in the game. Larson to take it. That's it. 3-1. And he's much more delighted now. Yeah, he's gone, he's gone for power and accuracy. Archie's kept it down low. Stefan Kloss has guessed the wrong way. And he's popped it in the corner there. Well, it's a replica of Alberts' uh, penalty yep. himself. And, and now Rangers really have the very difficult task to pick this one up. Uh, just getting a little quiet word there from Hugh Dallas. He's, he's had a couple of challenges there, just a little bit late, and obviously trying to stamp his mark on the game, but I think referee Dallas just a little bit concerned. Sixteen minutes gone. Still no goals. Larson's flick to Sutton. Henrik Larson again. Here's a chance. And Celtic will open the scoring. And it's Alan Thompson. Celtic picked a hole in the centre of the Rangers' defence. And it's Thompson who makes it 1-0. We've, we've spoken about it, they look very nervous at the heart of that defence again. Getting dragged all over the place, huge gap. Larson laying the ball in for Thompson, good support from Thompson. Easy opportunity at the end of the day, but uh, very concerning from a Rangers point of view. The amount of space that Celtic found through the heart of that defence, but uh, Henry Larson going for a little touch in from Sutton, lovely little roll pass to him and super support from Thompson from midfield and that was a reasonably easy opportunity for a man of this calibre Rangers in defensive disarray and Alan Thompson's fourth goal of the season Vegan and Sutton all there and also there is Henrik Larsson 1-0 Celtic 21 minutes gone in the second half it's been a long time of coming for Celtic, but finally they've made the breakthrough. A towering header from Henrik Larsson. The timing was perfection on his jump. And he's been kept quiet for so much of the match by Andreas Skerla. At that time, Skerla had to admit defeat. Larsson's 38th goal of the season, Celtic ahead. Thompson, who's free kick set up. Celtic's goal. Left by Larson for Sutton. And Henrik Larson surely now wins the game for Celtic. Two minutes left. And a brilliant exchange between Larson and Sutton. Henrik Larson's second goal of the game. And you would imagine there's now no way back for Dunfermline. Stepped over the ball initially, Larson. Let it go to Sutton. He was off and running, looking for the return. He got a half yard away from Andreas Skerla. That was enough. And he steered a shot away from Reutenbeck. And Celtic back in front. Now 2-1. Celtic well ahead on corners. And that confirms their domination. 
Well, they're far more dangerous from corners as well now, Ian. Thompson produces a tremendous delivery, particularly from this situation, and with uh, Vega, Nyalbe, Sutton in that box, they have a far better aerial presence as well. In it goes from Thompson. Larson's header! does well but it falls beautifully there good delivery as I said there by Thompson lasting up so well well dream chance and Celtic far more dangerous now from set pieces and again it's Larson's ability although Mialbe gets the final touch it's Larson's ability to get away from his marker and get the vital header in that made all the difference Skinner to Dare Again, too quick with the pass and possession lost with Infermo. Larson for Petrov. The first chance of the match and still here Petrov takes it. Ten minutes gone. Celtic break through. Petrov's eighth goal of the season. And the Infermo defence was opened up. Yeah, Petrov just loves getting forward. Typical example here, getting himself through. Clear and goal. He had a lot of work to do there. Had to steady himself, but absolutely superb finish. Cool head. Excellent pass through there uh, from Henry Larson. And Petrov, wonderful finish from him. And the timing of the pass and the run, both perfection. And as you saw from the first camera angle, Stylian Petrov was certainly on the side. This is a pale shadow of the Dunfermline team I saw a couple of weeks ago playing in the cup tie. Very impressive, very cohesive that day. Knew exactly what they were doing, but they've still to click so far this Sunday afternoon. And a free kick to face up to here. And a quick confab between Tommy Johnson and Henrik Larsson. There's the view from behind the ball. Five in the wall for Dunfermline with Jason Deere just alongside. Here comes Henrik Larsson. It's 2-0. A wonderful strike by Larsson. His 40th goal of the season. And Celtic, you would have to say, are on easy street. Yeah, there's a wonderful strike here from Henrik Larsson. Superb player he is, but uh, you do feel that uh, that side of the goal has got to be covered. The wall is taking care of the far side, but Routenbeck... He should really have that covered. They made a far better effort, albeit it was a superbly struck free kick from Larson. It seemed almost really there as if he was frozen to the spot. I mean, Martin O'Neill certainly enjoyed every moment of it, but it looked as if Reutenbeck was, was just frozen for a moment there. Yeah, I felt he got himself uh, blinded behind his own wall. He made the step, anticipating the curl over the wall, got himself blinded. Larson put it in the corner that he should have been covering. Corner kick from Thompson, it flew off the head of Todd. Larson, Lennon, Neil Lennon's first goal for Celtic, seals the win, and there's a broad smile on the face of his mentor Martin O'Neill, Lennon opens his account for Celtic, and after his miseries of midweek on international business, I don't think anyone would deny Neil Lennon a little bit of joy here. Straight from him, not an easy one to take. The film and not clearing the ball. Just Larson again, just laying it back for Lennon to have a strike into the far corner. In front, a corner from Alan Thompson and a free header from Ramon Vega. Vega's third goal of the season and the simplest of headers for the opening goal. Good movement and build-up from Celtic after the break as Lennon picked out Moravchik. His left foot strike was just over. Moravchik close with this one, but not close enough. He did produce the corner, which led to Celtic's second goal. Another free header from Vega and a double for the Swiss defender. The man marking suspect, Vega's header found its way through Rossi's leg and past the keeper. Celtic back in front. Celtic needed a third to kill the game off. 
and it came from a penalty as Andreas Skerler pulled down Larsson. Referee Willie Young awarded the spot kick as the Lithuanian tangled with the Swede. Larsson duly finished the job off, his 41st goal of the season. The Swedes spot kick low and hard and Celtic with a 3-1 advantage. But Celtic weren't finished, another penalty. This time it was Yusef Rossi who fouled Larsson. The Moroccan clearly made contact with the man and not the ball. Goal number 42 was duly dispatched by Larsson and Celtic cruising to that quarter-final place. Number 42, just like number 41. Celtic with the bulk of the possession, as you'd expect, but still to make a breakthrough. Larsson's layoff. Petro up to Thompson. That's a nice touch from Alan Thompson. Time to measure the cross. And what a, what a header from Henrik Larsson. The deadlock is broken five minutes from half time. Hearts have kept Larsson at bay so far. And finally, Larsson hits the mark. Well, it's been coming hasn't it and Thompson his crosses just have been getting better and better he looks up and he picks his spot and who better to put it onto the head of than Henrik Larsson who makes absolutely a superb header into the far corner Niemi really can't do anything about that one superb power on this header he waits for it and he just crunches the header into the top corner and Antti Niemi got a good hand to it but he couldn't keep it out, and Martin O'Neill will be pleased that the pressure has finally paid off. And Celtic have their noses in front with Henrik Larsson's 43rd goal of the season. He's chasing all sorts of records, and his goal scoring is phenomenal. He'll be happy. Fumble apart from that, he's been quite excellent. They're all in there, it's in. Larsson's done it. The dirt block has been broken inevitably. The man scoring his 45th goal of the season and Hamden erupts in green and white as the Swedish international in a congested goal mark finds a space to put it away. Now well, once again, for Celtic, it's happened so often this season. We've got the breakthrough from a set piece of the short corner. For Arctic putting a good ball, the, the big bodies can pile in. And as usual, Henrik Larsson right on his toes there. Still a bit to do. Gets his body turned and puts it in the bottom corner, giving Gordon Marshall no chance. I think uh, Gordon Marshall might have expected it to go just a little bit higher, but you know he's got this tremendous ability to make himself invisible to opponents, even though they knew exactly his potential. On three players going for it, a little bit of congestion again. Here's Maravchik. Henrik Larsson was screaming for it, but he let fly, he does, he's done it again! Quite amazing the way he took that. And with great elegance and precision, just lighted that above, bit through the nails, into the back of the net. Look at the way he did that. Oh, it's a deflection. He gets the aid of a deflection. That's the ball played to him, he's left on his own, scooped it up, and unfortunately for Chris Innes, off his foot, into the back of the net, and uh, neither Celtic nor the supporters will be worried about the off. No, I mean, it was a fantastic ball from Moravchik, really asking questions of the command of defence, but, you know, we've, we've praised Henrik Larson all season, and quite rightly so, he's been absolutely magnificent. For all the Kamara have had a lot of uh, possession going into that last third. Do you think they ever really scared that Celtic defence? Well, we suspected before the game that that would be the problem. Larson goes away again. This could be the hat trick coming up. It is. He did that beautifully eventually. 
of the field. He didn't panic. There's merely a prayer would have stumbled or lost his conviction, leaving McGowan for dead. And then watch this little deception there before tucking it away. Well, if there's an element of luck about his second goal, there's certainly no element of luck there. He's run half the, the length of the pitch. An absolutely magnificent composure when he gets in there. Gordon Marshall has come out just at the right time to try and narrow the angle and force him into shooting. He's just rolled his foot over the top of the ball, took it to his left and rolled it into the empty net. A fitting goal for a cup final. Who man in the match, uh, Billy? Well, I think there's been a few contenders. Gordon Marshall in the Kilmarnock goal. As you say, I was, I was going to give it to Colin Healy until Larson scored that third goal to, to get his hat-trick and the, the real class of the man shone through there, so it has to be Henrik Larson. The final whistle goes and Martin O'Neill has picked up his first trophy in Scotland. He's already done it south of the border with Leicester in the comparable trophy sporting handshake there is John Robertson who scored of course so many goals alongside O'Neill for Nottingham Forest enjoys and savours that moment but surely all lovers of this club will savour the individual performance of that man there, Henrik Larsson. He wasn't in the game as, as much as he's been in others, but I think we also emphasise the fact that Celtic, not just with Larsson, but with other players, are capable of turning a game in a few seconds as he did. And that long run of his and that delightful little Highland Scottish over the ball that deceived the goalkeeper and slipped it into the back of the net will long be remembered in this final. Three goals to Henrik Larsson, the CIS League trophy, the Celtic Football Club, Paul Kilmarnock, well, hardly any consolation. Remember, they were playing against 10 men for a considerable part. And let's now go to Martin O'Neill with Peter. Martin, your first piece of silverware as manager of Celtic. Can you describe your emotions? Well, it's fantastic. It's really fantastic. The players were absolutely magnificent from start to finish. It's been a long, long season for them. They've been leading the league for, for months and months and months. It was a difficult one today, but they were fantastic. Have you run out of superlatives for Henrik Larsson? Well, it's, it's sensational. Sensational. World-class footballer. Talking about your selection, Colin Healy, Archie McPherson pointed him out. He had a magnificent game. I'm glad you said that. I thought he was excellent. He really got at it. He hasn't played for a long, long time in the first team. That was a brilliant effort by him. The sending off could have gone against you, Martin. What did you make of it? Well, I couldn't... Uh, I, I would have to see it again. I thought from where I stood it was harsh. That's my... But I would have to see it again. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you very much, Peter. I don't think Martin could sing uh, any arias with that voice of his at the moment. But there we are. And here he comes. Paul Lambert. Paul Lambert, one of the most reliable midfield players. And he comes with uh, Jonathan Gould just behind him. The goalkeeping coach gave him... Uh, giving him a special handshake they're just being uh, held up just for a moment uh, the booze may suggest that the referee is getting his medal yes I'm right well uh, obviously that's something that's just happened in, in recent years the, the referee and his, uh, his fellow officials getting medals but I think it's only right and proper they do take part in the occasion and are obviously very important figures the broad smile in the face of Neil Lennon there as he comes forward with the rest of his Celtic players. Jules Palheran wasn't put under any great pressure today. There's a young fella, I thought it was outstanding. Healy. Now Paul Lambert, Mr. William Tucker of the CIS, presenting the cup. One of the great moments uh, to stand up there at Hampden Park and raise the cup. Well, there's Jonathan Gould. There's special cheers, I imagine, for that man. He's always got a broad smile on his face. It's a great moment, Billy. You experienced it back in 1985 with the red shirt of Aberdeen. Yeah, there's nothing to beat it, but I'm just thinking it's, it's amazing to think that uh, at this time last year they were doing the very same thing, Celtic, but obviously in very 
Yeah, different oh, circumstances. Different, totally different. Yeah. I mean, this is a, a solid uh, Celtic team. This is, this is, I suppose you like, uh, e epoch building. The way they've, they've gone about winning the league and now this. Quite amazing the way. Bobby Pedder injured, of course, earlier on in the game with what looks like a groin injury. Yeah, and of course, Chris Sutton, the other uh, injury out before the game, didn't manage to finish the game either, but obviously it was not quite in the, the circumstances that we thought. Some of the players uh, from the bench, who didn't get their opportunity. And Tommy Boyd, who come on at the very last. Great Celtic captain in the past. And then, and I think uh, we're approaching Henrik Larsson. And Peter is with Henrik Larsson. Henrik, 12 months ago, Celtic had this trophy in troubled times. A lot has changed since then. Uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, we're looking forward. Uh, I don't even know what to say here. <laughs> what about the goals? A hat-trick in a final. You must be delighted with the performance. Uh, yeah, obviously, I'm pleased. I think there was a great result for us. It was very, they made it very hard for us today. and We managed, managed to get the first goal. and. Uh, and then uh, we got a second one when we most needed it because uh, Chris was sent off. And then once it was uh, three, then the game was finished. It was a tough shift for you. What were you thinking when you picked up the ball at the halfway line? Uh, no, I was just thinking, go on. And uh, then the, I shook the defender loose. I have to be in. And there's the Celtic team down there. Henrik Larsson, well, some of them have put on these green hats. It makes them look like fast food attendants, but it is the Celtic winning team down there. That is the modern way. Uh, to, to get on sometimes T-shirts and, and hats, whatever they can get their hands on. I think maybe sponsors' uh, caps there. So, uh, as I say, that's part of modern day football. Neil Lennon. A significant buy, of course, Neil Lennon from, from the south. Enjoying, uh, I'm sure, something which will be softer than later on. And I think uh, we have Paul Lambert again with Peter. Paul, as captain of Celtic, you must be delighted with that performance. Oh, very proud. Uh, you worked very hard for it through the year, and uh, I think the way things have been going, I think we deserved it. Were you a bit worried when, obviously, the side went down to ten men? What was your view on Chris Sutton sending off? No, I can't comment on that. Uh, the referee calls the way he sees it, but... 10 men, we were very solid and we, we didn't like command one of the game and I think, we, I think we deserve to win. Everybody mentions Henrik Larsson but Colin Healy was outstanding. Great, young kid coming in and uh, we know he's like in training, he holds his own in training, uh, he's a young kid and uh, no, fantastic for him. It's the first trophy, everybody's thinking about the treble, this must be a tremendous boost for all the boys. Uh, it's fantastic, I mean a lot of pressure on it, the new manager and everything come in but all oh, credit to everybody at the club for uh, to the manager, right down the uh, what very hard. And a tribute to the manager, he's turned this club around. Oh, God's sake, unbelievable what he's, what he's achieved, and uh, hope, hopefully, he can continue. Enjoy your day, Paul. The cup being paraded round Hamden Park to the sounds of a song written for a Broadway show, but which has been purloined rightfully by football. Down in Merseyside and here in Glasgow. No wonder a special embrace for the cup. Well, we've seen uh, the whole range of emotions from this man today. We saw him exploding, letting rip, and also very relaxed at the end with the voice of a man who'd obviously been involved in the game. Yeah, I think the, the game turned out to be a bit more eventful than they would have thought. Matt O'Neill losing Bobby Petter with injury early on, and then, of course, Chris Sutton sent off. And, of course, Kilmarnock didn't make it easy for them, as you would expect, for a, a well-established Premier League club, Kilmarnock, and uh, well-drilled and make life difficult for their opponents. But, uh, once again, it was uh, Henrik Larsson's nose for a goal in the, the first instance and the class that really rounded it off at the end. Well, it is indeed a very dignified parade. I've seen more ecstatic ones than that. And we have uh, Neil Lennon with Peter. Neil, justified 
was a long wait for you coming to Celtic. This surely justifies your move to the north. Ah, oh, without a doubt, it's uh, sort of put into words. So it's nice to win trophies, but obviously, first one with Celtic, and uh, it's very special. You, more than any other player here, knows exactly what Martin O'Neill brings to Celtic, and this really is the culmination of all the effort. Well, you can see it in the team's performance. Uh, it's not just about individuals, we're collectively, and the young lads who came in there were magnificent for us as well. You know, we lost Bobby very early, which is a big blow, but Stephen Crooney came in, did a great job, and, you know, Henrik again, you know, he's the man. Unbelievable performance again. Mention to the captain there, Paul Lambert, everybody now thinking that's one trophy down. How achievable is it for Celtic now to go on and take their remaining two trophies? Well, it's asking a lot, you know, we think we're down at bare bones at the minute. We've got a wee break, like, feel the lads away in at the Nationals, so hopefully I'll come back fully fit, and I'll give the rest of the lads a chance to get through their injuries, so hopefully we'll be back to full strength again, come the Aberdeen game. They've had a few troubled times, these Celtic fans. You obviously want to enjoy it and, and get involved with them and share the success. I do, it's unbelievable. I mean, look, it's a fantastic experience. I mean, I've been to Wembley a few times, but this is something else, like, you know. Neil, thanks very much. Martin O'Neill, though, has transformed the fortunes of Celtic Football Club. Although Rangers have had their injury problems, obviously, this season, Still can't take anything away from O'Neill's achievements. Now Didier catch he turns, he scores! A breakthrough for Celtic, and they are closing in on the Scottish Premier League title. Well, he hasn't been in the game, Ian, but what a contribution to make when it really mattered by Didier Gatt. I think eventually this goes through the legs of Jimmy McAllister. Ryan Essen, wrong-footed. You see McAllister, he's tight on him. Spin there by Agat, and the shot caught Ryan Essen on his heels. McAllister thinks he's in the right position here. Agat plays it back across the goalkeeper. And Didi Agat, who's hardly been in it, may turn the... thousand fired-up fans have been invited to the party. Many more wish they were here. Some will be here in spirit. Lots will be watching around the world. Such is the global appeal of Celtic Football Club. A club that means so much to so many. atmosphere and awesome arena the Celtic players will shortly be reminded of something by their intensely proud and passionate fans when you wear the famous hoop shirt of Celtic FC you'll never walk alone without scoring for Celtic, never thought he was up to much. Larson remains one short of the club's post-war record of 48 goals in a season, a record held by our own Charlie Nicholas. There was a sweet on the score sheet midweek, mind you, a dramatic late winner against Dundee came from Johan Mielby. He didn't figure much early season, but he figures a lot now. It's his 100th appearance for Celtic. The man in charge is a rising star on the referee circuit, John Underhill. Celtic are after their first treble for 32 years. At the moment, it's one down, two to go. By three o'clock, it could be two down, one to go. A 37th league championship beckons. An 80th major honour is within their grasp.
It's been an incredible journey for Martin O'Neill's Celtic. Their destination is dreamland, and they are due to arrive there in 90 minutes. This is the way they wanted to do it on this day in front of their fans. And at the moment, Celtic usually get what they want. St Mirren will give it their best shot, of course, but you just get the feeling that this was meant to be for Celtic. Today was meant to be. Yeah, I think this is what... Thompson. And Larson. It opens up for him, unselfishly, to Tommy Johnson! Johnson gets the party going! Celtic have turned up for their date with destiny! Well, it took him a long time to get it in the net in, but relief all round here for the 60,000 crowd. Larson, unselfish, could have released the shot himself. Terrible touch from Tommy Johnson. And he does well enough for the second attempt. And this is a game, well, it doesn't matter how it goes in this afternoon, as long as it goes in. And at last, some of the pressure is off Celtic. Two guilt edge chances missed earlier on. Tommy Johnson at the second attempt this time. In midweek, saw off Dundee. There is only one minute of added on time, and we're in it now. Celtic are nearly there. Vega, once again, he won it. So, so, so close. Their time has come. Their time is now. Celtic are champions of Scotland for only the second time in 13 years. Martin O'Neill has won the league in his first season. An amazing achievement. Just as he did at Leicester, O'Neill has turned an ordinary team into an extraordinary team. A team of winners, a team of title winners. For once, the Hoops have lived up to the hopes, the hopes of their faithful followers who right here, right now, over the last decade or so that it's going to be all the sweeter for the Celtic squad and their management team and once again they did it the hard way in. this is their 14th single goal victory of the season and I think that's a measure of how they've been prepared to push every match to the wire games that were drawn last season were won this season in the space of 12 months suffered a lot in recent times so if you don't mind they're going to make the most of this they've gone from second best to simply the best they are Celtic and they are the champions Henrik Larsson still waits to break Charlie Nicholas's goals record beaten only once all season Celtic have been outstanding that's why they are very worthy winners of the Scottish Premier League. Sure, Rangers have had their injury problems this season, but that must not detract from the considerable achievements of Martin O'Neill and his men. They've had the drive, the desire, the determination, and they've given us thrills and spills and skills along the way. Yeah, I think as Martin O'Neill said yesterday, in Celtic thoroughly deserve this. They've been the best, the most consistent side. They've scored more goals than any other side. And I think they're claiming today what is rightly theirs. Last season, Celtic finished 21 points behind Rangers.
today they have moved 22 points ahead of them and just get a load of this today that'll happen at a later date because I think these fans would quite like to see it now and I think Paul Lambert would quite like to get his hands on it he's talking to David Tanner Paul congratulations how does this compare to our last champions were here oh, everyone's very hard to win them and uh, I'm just delighted we've won it this year we've deserved it I think you know was that a long afternoon for you oh terrible just the second half is only one, one goal in it but no, again, like Wednesday night, I'll okay, credit everybody who hung out there, and uh, at the end of the day, I think we're, we're the best team. Compare the spirit in this team to the one which won the league under Grim Jansen. Uh, you can see for yourself, we, we've only been beat once in the league, and uh, that's not done any fluke. For, I think we've got to deserve it. Probably. And I saw you uh, go over there and put things still in Petrov. What an emotional afternoon it seems to have been for him. No, he's, he's done, like everybody's been rowing for his whole season, and I'm just very disappointed for what happened to him, but no, it's lovely to see him down here and uh, he said in the condition he's in, but I feel like I asked you about Grim Jansen's time here, but what about last year? I mean, what, what did Martin O'Neill do, do you feel, to turn that around here? No, we had a belief and uh, he brought in players to help us and uh, every one of them came and done is a right turn and, and uh, now we have to go and, and, and uh, enjoy this and see what happens in the, in the rest of the season. And when Tommy Johnson got the chance for the goal, do you think, did you think he'd missed it? I did actually, but OK, it's him a great finish for him and uh, I'm absolutely delighted for him as well. Oh, well done. By the way, who's going to lift the, the championship trophy? Is it going to be your Tom Boy? No, it doesn't matter. We won as a club and uh, Tommy lost it, so no problem. Well done today, Paul. It doesn't matter who lifts it, they have it. And in his first season at Celtic, Martin O'Neill has done it. He's now with David. Martin, I know you're a very emotional man at the best of times, but can you sum up the feeling at the moment? I haven't heard what you said, David, but I know it's been a fantastic night or a day, and it's all, it's all worthwhile. When you can hear this, it's just really worthwhile. I said I know you're an emotional man, but how does this compare to what you've achieved uh, previously in this it's year? Fantastic, you know. I'm, I mean, it is just. Well, you can hear it yourself. It's really brilliant, brilliant. Without a doubt, it's worth waiting for. Scottish attendance record for the season. Uh, it's an incredible atmosphere. Isn't Absolutely it? fantastic, honestly. Just to get that, to get the all-important goal today, to win it in front of our own fans was fantastic. Was there any sign of nerves before the game? I mean, how, how did you come by that? I think there was a little bit of tension in the dressing room beforehand. You know, the uh, the build-up beforehand, the expectation of the fans, all that type of stuff. But we know we had to score a goal at least to win it. Martin, I know you'll want to continue with the party. We'll, we'll speak to you later on. Thank you for your time. Congratulations. Pleasure. Well, they're not just celebrating here. Celtic fans will be singing and dancing across parts of Glasgow, across Scotland, across the United Kingdom. And Ireland, of course. Greetings to everyone there. In fact, you'll find Celtic supporters all around the world. And wherever they are, they'll have found a way to watch this, Celtic FC gets to you like that. What about Martin O'Neill though, Davey? A quick word, a quick appreciation about him. Yeah, absolutely. Astonishing the job he has done, even, uh, even more so when you consider the shambles this club was last season. 
The last time they won the title, Vim Janssen resigned a couple of days later. They now know they have the right man in charge to take them forward. The PLC board now has to provide the resources to allow them to do that. It's time for the lap of honour, but just listen to this.
this will be the first of a few parties to be held in this part of the world. The trophy to be presented at a later date after the league has split. Next up, of course, for Celtic, there's the little matter of a Scottish Cup semi-final against Dundee United. Celtic in the hunt for the treble, something they haven't achieved since the end of the 1960s. And it's going to take a supreme effort from Dundee United and whoever they meet in the final to stop these boys. Their nickname is the boys, but make no mistake, they have been men this season. of a hurry to leave Celtic Park today and if you fancied a quiet night out in Glasgow tonight forget it it's not going to be very quiet Neil Leonard joined in December and played a vital role and although Larson is always the name that stands out this was of course one supreme team effort which has given Celtic the title in the first week Players don't seem to want to leave, no surprise there. The fans certainly don't want them to leave. Alan Thompson arrived from Aston Villa in the early stages of the season. He's a title winner. Sure, if Martin's going to take the mic for a chorus, I certainly hope he does take the mic, uh, Ian, because uh, he's done not a bad job here this season. <laughs> he's done well. I don't think the fans are going to hear him that much. They're making too much noise. Thank you very much. The support has been fantastic this season. They're just. Uh, uh, Celebrations there with David Tanner. Fellas, congratulations, Tommy. First of all, your goal did it today. Uh, what does that mean to you after all you've come through at this club? Brilliant, David. You know, obviously, we're suddenly being suspended. That was an added bonus for me, but uh, as you can see, everyone's part of it. It's been brilliant. It doesn't matter who scored, to be honest. It's just a matter that we had to win and we've won. Look at it. Everybody's fantastic. Unbelievable. His first touches go. Uh, is that the worst ever? I haven't got one. <laughs> you keep saying but you know I thought I'd blown it I had a couple of chances before it but uh, as long as it went into it that was the main thing you know what I mean <laughs> are you going to uh, are you going to relish today because there might not be too many more at this club or do you feel as you might be here next season I don't know we'll have to sit down with the manager and that we'll see what happens I'm not thinking about that at the minute Davey all I'm going to do is enjoy it really enjoy it Tommy thanks very much indeed Alan Tommy 
scored an important goal today, but uh, I guess your goal killed off Rangers. Yeah, yeah, we scored. A lot of the lads, everyone played their part today. It was difficult. And um, I'm missing all the celebrations. I'm going to have to go. <laughs> well, you can't blame him. He wanted to join in that. And no wonder. <laughs> That was one of uh, David Tennant's more in-depth interviews, that. <laughs> Thompson's away to join this lot. And here they go again with the songs. in the Scottish Premier League this season. Now, there's a party going on, so, of course, Charlie Nicholas is not too far away, <laughs> and he can still pour us about that record, Charlie. It's not gone yet. No, I'm still hanging in there, Ian, but uh, I don't think it'll be long. I'm hoping that Martin O'Neill, if he's got any sense, which he showed plenty of this season, it's time to rest last, and he needs a seven-game <laughs> rest. But it's wonderful <laughs> scenes. I mean, Celtic have been patient. They've been waiting on the right guy to come in and build the foundations. And Davey and myself have been, you know, critical of Celtic in the past and being ex-players. It's never that pleasant. But I think sometimes you have to be truthful and honest about the, the passion you have for the club. And I think for the first time, although Janssen had to leave, I think for the first time Celtic have something now to go and build on. The foundations are there and they must take it further forward. Well, they uh, did lose Bim Janssen last time they won the title. But Martin O'Neill is going nowhere. Let's have a word with Neil Lennon. He's with David. Neil, congratulations. Uh, you've joined against some of your heroes in the Celtic history book. Aye, great day for me personally, but great day for the club. Uh, couldn't have come any better, really. You know, we've uh, been unbeaten since we've come here. I couldn't ask any more from the players and obviously the crowd now today. It's magnificent. How does this compare to winning the League Cup at Wembley? Uh, at it's unbelievable. Come and win the Championship here is just... Sort of put into words. I know it's an old cliche now, but I don't think it's really something yet. It probably will be about 12 o'clock at night, like, you know. Do you feel as though your signing just finished Celtic off? Not at all, no. I mean, the groundwork was already done. I just came in and uh, lent a bit of a hand, that was all. And uh, pretty pleased with how things have gone. Big game next week for us, you know. Uh, it would have been nice to do the travel, but still got two hard games in front of us. Very interesting. You'll love that Thanks very much, David. He's a smashing lad, Neil Lennon, and he really is playing for the team of his dreams, a huge Celtic fan. I think that makes a, a difference, and I think, like the manager, he has an affinity for this football club, and uh, that, that can make a big difference, and it, it has this season. Everyone has played their part in this successful season for Celtic Football Club, and remember, it could get better for Martin, because they are on course for Scottish Cup glory as well. seasons to remember in recent years. This club has a special place in the hearts of its fans. It's their 37th league championship. It's the 80th major honour in their history. One of the world's biggest clubs. Martin O'Neill in his first season has won the title for Celtic. This is the place where he wanted to be and what an impact he has made on a club that has a legendary status around the world.
person who has to ask all the fans to go home. Don't think they're going to get much of a response. Thank you, Martin. God bless. Everything has gone right for Martin O'Neill this season. There was that glitch, that 5-1 defeat at Rangers, but their response after that was superb. Unbeaten since, of course. Not only unbeaten, they've won 19 of the 22 games they've played since. Yeah, I mean, I think the result at Ibrox uh, could have seen them take a serious wobble, and they didn't do that. And that's a measure of the resilience, the kind of resilience that's seen them through. Well, the players have made it to the dressing room, but we've made it there too, and the champagne bottles will shortly explode. <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised if they were asked to go outside again, mind you, even though they have made it inside. Celtic milking the moment, or should that be champagneing the moment? Great to see Alan Stubbs in there. Alan Stubbs. Uh, you better believe it. And it takes uh, courage to win football matches at times. It takes a lot more courage to do what that lad has done. And I'm so glad to see him a part of those celebrations in that dressing room. It is so, so loud here. And the noise will be carrying across Scotland, across the United Kingdom, and most definitely into Ireland as well, that's for sure. There's still more to come with Jim and Charlie from Celtic Park, the home of the champions. It's an absolute honour for me to be the manager here, I'm telling you that now. I will do everything I possibly can to bring some success.
Larson for Henrik Larson, and he's put it through to Moravchik. He came off the bench to make the difference. Lubomir Moravchik finally breaches heart. Well, it's a terrific feat, first of all, from Tommy Johnson. He had a delightful reverse ball, not for the first time tonight. Moravchik had carried his run forward. Still a bit of work to do through in the goalie, but uh, well, he's got all the composure and the technique in the world to finish this off. And he makes a very good job of it. And once again, it's an inspired substitution for Martin O'Neill. He's now scored seven goals in nine games against Antti Niemi, the hearts keeper. Gathered here today are some of the most proud and passionate supporters you'll find anywhere in the world. Their feelings are so intense because Celtic Football Club plays such a big part in their lives. Here comes the trophy. As far as these fans are concerned, Celtic is in their blood, it's in their mind, it's in their heart. And it's in there, so the Bank of Scotland, thanks to the chairman of the SPL and George Mitchell, who is the deputy general manager for the Bank of Scotland. Celtic are close to lifting that wonderful piece of silverware, which testifies that they have been by far and away the best in Scotland this season. Often second best. In recent times, but this year it's they who are simply the best. Move over Rangers, come in Celtic. Only the second time since 1988 the Scottish Premier League trophy is coming to Celtic Park. Even when the Celtic fans were suffering, they were singing, you know, walk on, walk on, with hope in your heart, and you'll never walk alone. Nobody here is walking alone, because Celtic are the champions. from nowhere in. no one gave them a chance at the start of the season no one at all and they have been absolutely magnificent they've been the best team in the country by a long long way and much of it if not all of it for me is down to Martin O'Neill and the job he's done here Henrik Larsson's contribution has been gigantic 49 goals for the Super Swede Didier Agat Played such a prominent part too. Chris Sutton unable to play a part today. Winner north and south of the border now. Bobby Petter has uh, been out injured for a while. How about this man? Listen to the reception for Stylian Petrov. 
the legacy of the John Barnes era. Petrov out for a long time with a broken leg. And Alan Stubbs, who won his battle with cancer. Uh, brilliant. What a seat that is he. But Stubbs and Vigors have gone through this season does put football into perspective. It is only a game. Morton Vigors suffered from a terrible brain virus. Uh, wonderful in. And wonderful to see him back in training this week for the first time as well. We wish him well. Here comes the main man though, Martin O'Neill. With John Robertson and Stevie Walford. Martin O'Neill has transformed this famous club. Even this moment might have been beyond his wildest dreams. I think Alan Thompson's nicked the trophy. <laughs> We shall not be moved has been the rallying call from the Celtic fans all season. They were right as it turned out, but they'll be moved in a different way now. Moved by the emotion of all this, by seeing their team, their heroes, crowned champions. I think as early as day one at Tannadice, I see him, we saw the spirit that uh, Martin O'Neill was bringing to this club. And 15 times they've won by the odd goal and games that were drawn and lost that last season have been won this time and much of it is down to the spirit, the grit and the determination of a, a squad really that uh, Martin O'Neill has put together wonderfully well. What a difference a year makes and what a difference an O'Neill makes. Faithful followers of Celtic have had to suffer greatly lately in recent years. They've had to watch Rangers dominate the Scottish scene and it hurt. Boy, did it hurt. But it seems the balance of power is shifting. And let's hear from the man who lifted this year's Scottish Premier League Championship trophy. Tom Boyd is talking to David Tanner. Obviously their prize will be hard, they want to get one over in the champions, you know. So uh, we'll go again there and make sure uh, and show that they're, they're true champions. Do you think you've got a point to prove to them at Ibrox as much as they have to you as champions after the 5-1 game? No, not at all. We've won the championship, so uh, it's fun. You can enjoy it. Tom, thanks. Tom Boyd got his hands on the trophy, the club captain. And Celtic. Of course, they're on the verge of only their third treble now, a treble treble if you like. Martin O'Neill's team of 2001 have a chance to follow in the footsteps of the Lisbon Lions. The European Cup winners did the domestic treble in 1967 and again in 1969. 32 years on, will it happen again? The Celtic fans will be in no hurry to go home atrocious weather in Glasgow this evening they're gonna stick around for a while they're gonna be singing in the rain Henry Glasson seems to be rather happy in Glasgow and ready to commit his future to Celtic
Celtic. An astonishing 49 goal contribution from the Swede. Paul Lambert, such an influence on the team. Quick word too for a man who's not here today, sadly for family reasons, Neil Lennon. Yeah, terrific signing in and uh, come in beside Paul Lambert to protect our back three and did a magnificent job sadly missing out tonight but he was here for the big day against him and that was the one that uh, really counted and they've all played their part but uh, the man with the trophy now deserves to take it home with him all summer such as from his job here comes Martin O'Neill let's hear from uh, Chris Sutton he's down there with David Chris can you believe this atmosphere You know, we've been waiting for this all season. It's a pity we never had the trophy after the last home game, but it's fantastic. Talk us through what you think has, has won the title for Russell this, this season. What, what have you managed to get right? Well, we've won more games than anyone else, and we've got more points, so that's what we've made. Did you expect to win it in your first year? What did Martin O'Neill say to you to persuade you to come here? No, not really. Um, I think, you know, we've done fantastically well this year on the basis that Rangers finished 21 points ahead of us last season and, uh, you know, we've done really well to turn it around. From your point of view, you missed out tonight. What's the problem with you tonight? I've got a problem um, with my knee, but uh, I'm hopeful I can get it sorted out this week and be fit for the, the old firm game next week. Was that a knock you took or was it uh, looking at them? This hasn't happened much to Celtic in recent times. Championship parties have been all too rare for this famous club. But I guess the hard times make the good times even better. And there's every hope for Celtic fans at the moment that days like this and titles like this might not be quite so infrequent now. Hey, you've got to enjoy it and you have to savour it, Ian, because uh, unlike the, the Scottish Cup, which uh, when you win, you can enjoy for six, seven months before you have to defend it again. These guys will be back in pre-season training before the Norts and uh, it'll be game on again. So they really have to make the most of this and enjoy it. And Rangers will be back at them next season, make no mistake about that. An honourable mention too for Hibs this season. They gave it a go and were wonderful to watch. But it's time to forget the rest and take a look at the best. Today is all about Celtic. This season has been all about Celtic. O'Neill took Wickham Wanderers into the league and laid the foundations for their success. He established Leicester City as a top 10 team in England and took them through a couple of glory days as well. And in his first year at Celtic, he's on course for an amazing treble. The kids are here as well, of course. Nobody wants to miss out on occasions like this. What they have here with these supporters is sheer passion, intense passion. I think Newcastle and Sunderland probably come pretty close, but across the UK there's no place quite like Celtic Park when it's like this. It may not be the biggest club ground in Britain anymore. Old Trafford now holds that accolade, but you won't find many prawn sarnies around the east end of Glasgow, <laughs> that's for sure. football player, football manager and a football fan is all about having dreams. And most of the time those dreams don't come through, so when they do, hey, we've got to make the most of it. And rest assured, Celtic will make the most of this. And if the deafening noise from Celtic Park today is drifting across the city of Glasgow, then you can be sure that Rangers be ready to do their best and play a second win against Celtic this season but it will be scant consolation for them. Yeah Martin I know you can see enjoying it tonight along with Paul Lambert Ian, but he'll be planning ahead already I, mean, I don't think he's a type who would stand still he will have identified his signing targets for the summer months and it's important that Celtic build on this uh, too often from a position of strength they haven't capitalised 
they have to move it forward again in the summer, give Martin O'Neill somehow, give him the resources to improve this squad yet again for the challenges that lie ahead because he's proven already that uh, if he's given the money, he can use it wisely. Yes, he was talking not so long ago of the importance of the summer signings that he will make in taking Celtic onwards and upwards. Celtic are taking centre stage on their own grand stage. This magnificent 60,000 capacity stadium is jumping up and down just now. supporters tonight it had to be something good to lure Martin O'Neill away from Leicester City it was something good Celtic are his club and the chance to manage them proved irresistible the likeable Irishman has a real passion for Celtic but then he has a real passion for football in general of course his first season in charge could get even better. He won't be thinking too much about the Champions League in next season tonight, but he probably will be tomorrow. It won't be far from his mind. He'll be looking ahead. He will want more days like this, more silverware like that. Scottish Premier League trophy belongs to Celtic Football Club. Only their second championship success since 1988. And Martin hasn't really put a foot wrong this season. Everything's come off for him, but then you get what you deserve, I guess. The big questions were asked about Celtic when they were thrashed 5-1 at Rangers in November. And then the following midweek they went to Hibs and got a 0-0 draw. We wonder whether that was the start of a flip. Not a chance. Unbeaten in 24 games since. Yeah, that was the moment they could have wobbled in, but uh, they had the character to, to get back on track. And it must have been a sore one at Ibrox that day. But they used that disappointment to build the campaign that uh, we're seeing the culmination of now.
Isaac milking the moment uh, when you've been through what they've been through in recent times, watching Rangers let most of the silverware going. You cannot blame them. Tell you something, next season's title race could be interesting too because Rangers will spend and will be determined to give Celtic more than a run for it next year. And I'm sure Hibbs might have another save too. But Celtic won't be worrying about that just now. Jim and Charlie in a moment. They call this place paradise, and it sure feels. Lennon's free kick. Larson into the path of Lubomir Mirachik. He's through, and he scored. And it's one 0 to the champions. And it's little Lubo. Well, Henrik Larson does magnificently into hold. A lot of work from Moravchik to do from here though, and head up as usual, just tucked it inside the right hand post, and really his first major contribution to the match, Celtic's first attempt at goal, and a sweet moment for Martin O'Neill. Well he came off the bench to get the winner against Hearts last week, in from the start today, little quiet perhaps, but once again he's made the difference as the offside flag goes up against the Rangers strikers, the third highest scorer for Celtic this season. More than happy to go back to Douglas as they sit on this 1 0 lead. Maloney's flick. Oh, Maracic's going to be in again here. Where are Rangers? Lubomir Maracic. Is he going to get a second? You better believe he is. It's a double for Maracic. And Celtic are heading for their first win over. Showed any more composure. Wonderful finish by a wonderful footballer. Fernando Wixen caught with a flick on here. As the ball was played forward to Young Maloney, it's a delightful flick on to the least Moravchuk. Checks back inside Wixen. Stefan Kloss probably expecting it to go back across him to the far post and beating it his near side. A wonderful finish. Here's the shot, driven in hard. Well, there's Jackie McNamara getting the credit for that one. 
all going in. There's a little deflection there as it went high in the air. He scored. Almost got through. Thompson, good play. A gap. You're five one in, and it's just taken there. I think the goal's been awarded. Yes, McNamara again. Would you believe? Colgan went for that, couldn't grip it. I know the Hibs players look towards the referee, but Jackie McNamara scoring a couple, his sixth goal of the season. And a long time since uh, Jackie has scored two for Celtic in the one game. Hibs in midfield, they could be punished for it. Looks as if they might be. And that's him, yes. The third goal. He hasn't been in the game all that much, but he doesn't need to be when he can accelerate like that, get away from defenders. And that all stems from really shocking slack play by Hibbs in midfield. Colgan did get his hand to it. But in respect to these breaks, it hasn't been Hibbs' day. 51 goals now for this man and counting attempting one action again Alan Stubbs marks a remarkable comeback to football with a goal which delights that support and I'm sure anybody appreciating the personal endeavour of a man rising above adversity would congratulate him as well any supporter of any team determination in his personal life and bringing with it a little touch into this stadium with that positive header, 4-0. And we're happy. Ravchik shouting for it. And gets away. Oh, great play by Moravchik, yes. Great goal by Moravchik. Now, that was all about professional control and discipline. He might have been dispossessed once or twice in that run. But look how he finished that. The players of Celtic and Hibernian. Dreams come true. about it, tucked inside his left-hand post. And the crucial breakthrough for Martin O'Neill. Martin O'Neill to John O'Neill as Hibbs trying to hit back. Who's going to be first to that? Vaharin is the answer. Outstanding season for the Belgian international. And McNamara. Larson! It just had to be him! Touch with 
with him just rolls it in front of Larson doesn't matter whether it's the right or the left with this fella and once again you can hardly blame Mick Colgan a wonderful finish just bent into the top corner loads of pace on it and the finishing of a very special player Martin O'Neill's Celtic are 2-0 up in the Scottish Cup final Henrik Larsson has his 52nd goal of an extraordinary season a hat-trick against Kilmarnock here at Hampden in the League Cup final he began the demolition of Dundee United in the semi-final of this competition as he polished off hips maybe not yet as Larsson delivers the other Larsson Pilharan Larsson Sutton can he give it back to Henrik Larsson he can Larsson goes down to really, really wrap it up. It's another great example of Larson's movement and continues his run forward. One thing in his mind, getting his body between Gary Smith and the ball, inviting the challenge there. And Kenny Clark was well positioned to get it. He's got a hold of, of Smith jersey, I have to say. semi-finals of this competition it's Henrik Larsson was there ever any doubt about it Henrik is a Hamden hero again as Celtic close in on the treble well he changed his style again he normally goes for power and he just decided to tuck that away just opens his body plenty of power on the sacred effort though Once again, it's Henrik Larsson will be making the headlines tomorrow morning. And if you think he knocked that penalty away with his right foot, his first goal was with his left. He's magnificent in the air. Works his socks off for the team. Not a bad signing at 600. Free kick. Every single player has given their all. It's all over. Celtic have won the Scottish Cup. It's a treble for Martin O'Neill in his first season in charge. A quite amazing achievement. A truly fantastic feat. O'Neill found the pull of Celtic irresistible. They were the team of his dreams. What's happened, though, has been beyond his wildest dreams. Celtic's team of 2001 in the footsteps of legends by completing only the third treble in the club's history. It's a treble, treble. The Lisbon Lions did it in 1967 and again in 1969. The 60s were certainly swinging for Celtic, but 32 years on, the man of the millennium is Martin O'Neill. How does he follow this? With Martin, you get the feeling you'll think of something. He's talking now to David Tanner. Congratulations on a very hot day. Just how good was that performance from your players? I thought they were brilliant from start to finish. I thought they were absolutely excellent. They adapted to the conditions. It was quite warm for a football game, but it didn't really matter today. I knew that they were absolutely up for the game and, and it wasn't going to be lack of trying that would beat us today. Is it fair to say that adrenaline got a lot of your players through? Some of the ones who perhaps were carrying knots? Yeah, it's been a long season. I mean, I, I thought Sutton, who hasn't done anything, hasn't played a competitive game, was absolutely essential for us. But to, to, to name any single one out there today would be unfair. I thought they were immense, every single one of them. You've had about six weeks to prepare for this. Has it sunk in yet? You've won the treble. No, it probably hasn't. I mean, the supporters were magnificent today. I know that there'll be people all around a bit of beanbag or whatever the case may be I'm delighted for the supporters obviously I'm delighted for the players without whose efforts we couldn't have done it Martin well done thank, thank you very much David thank you well there is another side to the story of course Frank Sozzi unable to inspire Hibs this time and their wait for Scottish Cup glory goes on and on and on 99 years they've waited it's going to be a century of waiting Hibs will have another crack next year, whether Alex McLeish will, well, I'm sure all will be revealed over the next few days with West Ham United waiting to pounce for his services.
but sorry Hibs, it's all about Celtic today and it's all about one man in particular, King Henrik is with David Tanner. Congratulations Henrik, surprise, surprise, you're the tenants man of the match. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I feel brilliant, I mean this is the one I missed in, uh, in Scotland, I was in final two years ago and uh, we lost against Rangers, so it was absolutely delighted that we could finish it off today, I think the team played very well today again. Uh, we got the one one zero to Jackie, a great goal, great pass from Didier and then uh, second half we got the second one, give, give, gave us a little bit more breathing room and uh, then we got the penalty and then it's finished. You scored 53 goals now, what about your first goal, the header, is that one of your favourites? The what? Your, your first goal, was that one of your favourite goals this season? <laughs> this one, today, oh yeah, was, I just latched on it with my left and uh, it was top corner, so it was, it was really pleasing to see that one go in. Just before we came to you for the interview, Martin O'Neill said something special to you, what was it? Uh, no, uh, he just uh, said uh, I'd done it okay today and uh, he was pleased with oh, no. He's a master of understatement as well, is he? Ah, no, he's done a great job. Uh, I mean, the treble and uh, yeah, the treble is, is here now, so I can talk about it. It's no problem. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. Well, there will be a slight delay because Celtic, like Hibs, had to wear their away kit today. They've gone off to change their shirts. They're going to go up for the cup with the hoops on. Hibs, though, will trudge wearily up. The 16 steps for Shirts. The hoops are on, the hoops are out, and it will soon be time to salute the team of the season in Scotland. And they have been the team of the season by a very, very, very long way. Celtic have won the Scottish Cup for the first time in six years. That's quite a long wait for a club of their size and stature. Final day of the season belongs to Martin O'Neill and to Celtic. No surprise, really. Most days throughout the season belonged to Martin O'Neill and Celtic. Kenny Clark and the officials pick up their medals. Lubomir Mirapcik had to leave the field early when his gas leg opened up again, but... Really, the introduction of Jackie McNamara in his place proved to be quite telling because McNamara scored the first goal before Henrik Larsson took over. <laughs> league Cup winners, league champions, Scottish Cup winners. Celtic, record breakers, history makers, treble takers. Scottish Cup winners for the 31st time more than any other club Martin O'Neill has steered them to the treble in his first season in charge there's just been no stopping Celtic all season I've said it before a few times but what a difference a year makes last season was woeful this famous club became a bit of a laughing stock, in truth, but they're the ones who are laughing now. Martin O'Neill has put a smile back on the face of Celtic, and what an emotional moment for Alan Stubbs, who after the cup final two years ago had to take a drug test here. It took him ages, but the drug test discovered cancer problems, which thankfully he has now recovered from. Henry Glasson, the main man for Celtic once again. Lubomir Maracic, unable to play a part in most of the final, but what a part he's played all season. Hamden heroes all round. Celtic winners of the 2001 Tenants Scottish Cup. You don't suppose they might milk the moment, do you? 
treble winners. This has become a familiar sight this season. Celtic celebrating Celtic with silverware. If the players are having the time of their lives, you can be sure that the fans are too. the oldest trophy in world football and Celtic won't actually be taking that one away they'll be given a replica so that the original can stay in the Scottish FA's museum here to be fair it is 127 years old all through the season it looked like the balance of power was shifting in Scotland make no mistake it has shifted Celtic are in charge now they are the rulers they are the kings, the cup kings for sure, and champions too. I don't want to put a dampener on the celebrations, baby, but how do they follow this? Yeah, exactly, but I think it'll take a few weeks to, to enjoy this, and you don't have a lot of time because these Celtic players will be back in training on July the 2nd, so... They've really got to try and drink in what they've achieved this season. And I think to appreciate the scale of what they've achieved, you have to, to think back to what Martin O'Neill inherited. And he stood on the steps of Celtic Park last June the 1st, promised the Celtic fans he would give it his best shot, do everything he could to bring success to the club. Well, has he delivered big time of work? Just a bit. Celtic Football Club, though, very much a club of the people. And the people are having the time of their lives. Pretty sure that eventually we'll get a chorus of You'll Never Walk Alone. When we do, it will make your spine tingle. Tom Boyd, the club captain, Celtic fans pay homage to their heroes who won the League Cup here 3-0 against Kilmarnock. They've won the Scottish Cup here 3-0 against Hibernian. And uh, as lovely as their away kit is, it's good to see them in those famous hoops. The sun is shining. At Hamden, but it's been shining on the Celtic fans and their players for most of the season. And stand by for one of the most stirring sounds and sights in football. takes your breath away. Let's hear from Super Sub Jackie McNamara and Paul Lambert. They're both with David Tanner. Jackie, I don't know whether Josh had a question or actually for a song. Hi. Hi. 
That's fantastic. I'm here to talk about it. Great day for the club. This will win a great season. It's to get the end of a good season for us. When you started the day on the bench, did you ever think that you would have such a, a huge hand in winning the cup for Celtic? No, I was just happy to be involved in the squad and obviously we'll get injured and I got a chance to go on early doors. And so yeah, I'm just glad to be involved and in get a first goal and next year and you know, uh, emulate the this season and go to Europe very well in the Champions League. I want to be your dad, Jackie Senior, who of course went for Hibernian in their last cup final. How will yeah, you be feeling tonight? He'll be, be very proud, I think. Uh, also a bit disappointed for Hibs, but I'm sure he's glad for me. Jackie, well done today, thank you. And Paul Lambert is with me as well. Paul, what a special afternoon that was for you. How, first of all, how's the injury? No, it's, and he kept on, kept on giving away a wee bit, but... was it playing in these temperatures? Well, it's the same for both teams, but I think we deserve to win. And, uh, OK, the team's done very well and it's had a great season, but I think it's just going here. It's been about six weeks since you had a game of real importance when you won the title. How difficult was it to, to get the momentum back up for today? No, it's not difficult. A professional bunch of guys and uh, the manager keeps on the toes, so it's never any really question of money. Uh, the rules only up this game and that's what I'm to do. Too much tonight somehow as Celtic celebrate a quite amazing treble. A truly outstanding achievement. Martin O'Neill becomes only the seventh manager to do the treble in Scotland. Let's hear from the club captain, the man who got his hands on the Scottish Cup. Tom Boyd is with David. Tom, yet another trophy lift. Uh, are you getting used to it now? Oh, I don't think you can get used to this, can you? Uh, it's just special and the noise and the band fans. It's just something that uh, you would hope would come around all the time, but uh, it's special when it does come around and that you see today what it means. Sum up what the last couple of weeks have been like for you personally, Tom. Oh, this is just phenomenal, you know. The, for myself, obviously, there's been a lot of hard times when uh, we've started off uh, my Celtic career here. But to come through it all and to have a, a treble win inside, be part of it, uh, is quite exceptional, really, for myself. And I'll just start, I'll go out and enjoy it, don't worry. You've seen a few, in your days at Motherwell, in your days at Celtic, you've seen a few Rangers teams win the treble. You what? You've seen a few other teams winning the treble, so how special is it to see Celtic and the green ribbons of all three trophies? Oh, I don't worry about them, I've got all seen a concern with Celtic. Coming about, but uh, I think we've probably deserved it this season. When did you know? When did you think that Celtic were going to win the treble? We well, haven't put the third one in for the penalty. <laughs> yeah, we, we had a great chance. Obviously, you, you can't think about that, and, and rightly so. You play it down, what the manager says. Uh, but once you get out there, and you, you know the confidence was going through the team right through to the end, and then once we got to the final, and obviously you think, well, fairly straight, obviously. I think you'll get a great chance, but uh, it's only once you went like, two nothing up, I thought, you know, well, that, that's that, you know. Was there one thing in particular that Martin O'Neill has done just to turn things around here, would you say? Uh, apart from leaving me out. <laughs> no, I think that, you know, everybody has come in and played a part. Uh, the team has been quite exceptional. He's brought a lot of, you know, bringing confidence and a, a belief back to players uh, has been a big thing. But I think his enthusiasm and his uh, desire, I think that's certainly sparked off in the team, and you can see that right away. Tom, I'll let you go and try it. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Cheers. Well, Martin O'Neill 
gets links seemingly every day with the Manchester United job, but I think people in England probably underestimate just how much Celtic Football Club means to him. He might well end up at Old Trafford one day, but not just yet, that's for sure. No, but it certainly won't have gone, gone unnoticed, and he had to hit the ground running up here. Rangers have won the title with the dominant side and made five signings. And nobody in their right mind would have fancied Celtic for a treble. And the fact that they're standing there having done it is down to Martin O'Neill. Well, let's have a word with the man who joined the Celtic cause in December from O'Neill's former club, Leicester. Neil Lennon is with David now. Neil, congratulations. Was that a victory for Celtic or a victory for Sunblock? I had a back of 30 on the day. I, so I mean, we, we had to, took a time getting going. Jackie's goal really turned the game for us. I think up until then, Hibs played really well. I come out second half, all guns blazing really, and uh, I think we dominated the second half really. Just fed it on the day. It's been a long, long season for Celtic. Uh, how tiring was it in that heat? Yeah, it's hot today, like, you know, but the rewards were good at the end, you know, so we try not to think about those things. Pitch wasn't the best either, really, and uh, we just kept it going. Henry came up with the goods again, but as I said, I think Jackie's goal was a turning point, and after that, we never really looked back. You've obviously been with Martin O'Neill at Leicester. Uh, how much has he impressed you this season? Has he, has he changed at all? Nah, he was just the same man, you know, before. His man management was brilliant at Leicester. He brought them success, and he's turned his club on its head in one season. Uh, you know, the, the, the hard bit's trying to do it again, but I mean, we're just going to reflect on what we've achieved so far and come back in a few weeks and try and do it again. You don't, you don't really have long to enjoy it, do you? Nah, I've got about four weeks, but I'm going to make the best of it, mate. Don't worry about that. Sure you will. Neil, well done. Thanks, David. Cheers. Well, rest assured, Neil Lennon will make the most of it as well. I think we can safely say. Celtic fans aren't quite ready to go home just yet and I think they're going to have quite some night in the city of Glasgow. Those fans who have suffered for so long but they haven't suffered at all really <laughs> this season. It has been a memorable season for Celtic FC. Still plenty more to come from Jim Layton and from Charlie Nicholas. So the Scottish Cup belongs to Celtic but then this season Everything belongs to Celtic. <laughs>